work their tails off and, and we, we definitely have the best class of decommits from Miami because I think we have <laughs> six or seven kids that we had committed that are now playing at BCS schools. Right. And uh, we're actually excited about those kids because we really love those kids when we recruited them. We loved them when they committed. You never like when a kid uh, decommits, but uh, you know, some of those situations made a lot of sense for them and the school that they wanted to go to. And so I said, we, we definitely have the best signing class of kids that left us yeah. uh, in our league, but we are very, very excited about the kids uh, that are coming in, we can basically go out and play a football game minus a kicker and punter. Right. Uh, we've got all our positions covered, and uh, we've got a lot of great, great kids from great programs that have been very well coached in high school, uh, and then very talented genetically, and then they're all great kids from great families. So I've sat in every one of their living rooms, and um, Miami, if they knew what I knew about these kids and, and our university knew, they would be very excited about the people that are coming to represent our university. Very good. Well, I hope you'll sit back and join us here for the next several hours. We will introduce you to those signees as we go through the day here. We are here inside Coach Martin's office and a newly renovated office here. You'll get a tour of that a little bit later on. Also, uh, Coach Martin and I will give you a little sneak peek inside the Miami Indoor Sports Center, the new practice facility that is being finished this week. Nobody's allowed to practice in there until next week. We'll give you a sneak peek of that a little bit later on in the show. We'll also be joined by the Director of Athletics, David Saylor. He will join us. And uh, again, uh, we'll uh, just kind of take you through what is next for Miami football over the next season as well. But before we do that, let's kind of revisit a little bit, Coach. Last year, 2-10 uh, and ten for this football team. You had some guys come in from Notre Dame, new commits as well, a year ago that uh, really came in, made an impact on the program as you start to rebuild this program. Yeah, and obviously you never feel good about winning two games. Right. Um, we have higher expectations, but we also knew what we signed up for a year ago. Um, we had talked as a team, we talked on this show a year ago that Miami's got to get competitive again. Like, we're not even a competitive football team. You can look at the record, and it, sure. the record wasn't good previously, but we're getting blown out almost every week no matter who we play we're not in games in the second half and we're not we're not a team that people is afraid to play of I said so the the first goal from a year ago was to get really competitive and let people know that Miami's coming back and right. when you got Miami in your schedule it's just not a not a walkover so we definitely accomplished that you know anybody that watches play this year in us involved know that we were in almost every game, and not in almost every game till halftime, and then got worn down. We were in almost every game till late in the fourth quarter. Some games we were in till the last play of the game that we had a chance to win a game, and uh, so from that standpoint, we changed the mindset of the program. Um, the next piece is winning. We won a couple of conference games. You break the losing streak, to but the next the next piece for us this year is now to start winning football games, and right. and we we have. We have a long ways to go physically. I think last year's class, we got bigger. This year's class, we're getting a lot bigger because uh, they're all our guys in this class. And uh, we need to get faster. We need to get stronger. But we need to we need to let these young kids grow up. So the, the biggest thing last year is we got competitive. Then, like you said, we added some players. And, you know, I think adding Andrew Hendricks, people kind of expected that a kid coming from Notre Dame and as talented as, as he was at Moeller High School could could be a benefit to us. The other kid that really helped us, Quentin Rollins. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anyone would have even come close to predicting. No, I'm like the eternal optimist and yeah. well, well beyond my expectations <laughs> for, for, what, for what Quentin could do and helped us. And those two kids were really, uh, along with last year's seniors, really turned the corner for us as far as being a competitive football team and keeping us in games and giving us a chance to win. And, and obviously Andrew had a great year for us and has, has a great opportunity to continue playing made it to the NFL PA game along with, with uh, Daywan Scott and Frazier made a game. But obviously Andrew's going to have a chance to get into a camp and hopefully make a team. And then obviously Quentin Rounds right now is potentially projected first-round yeah. draft choice. So you take a kid off Coach Coop's basketball team, who was a great player for Coach Coop and a four-year starter at Miami and had a great basketball career. And then to come out not only significantly impact our 2014 season, but now he's most likely going to impact Miami football for a long time by being our next – next probably star player in the NFL. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the great thing about college football. I, I mean, the, the Andrew Hendricks story in and of itself is very good. I mean, if he stays at, at Notre Dame and, and, you know, and, and plays his role there, he doesn't get the opportunity for a senior bowl, doesn't get that opportunity to, to, to look at the next level. And obviously you saw what he could do, and he gets that level, but he gets that opportunity by coming here. Yeah, and he, he not only did that, but he loved, loved playing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was the – 
even if he didn't have as good a year and he didn't make it to a bowl game and he didn't have people trying to work him out and test him out for the league, he loved playing here. He got his opportunity to play because he had been a backup, and then he ended up, you know, he's a great, great student. He loved everything about Miami. And like I always say, Andrew loved Notre Dame and will always love Notre Dame, so it's not a knock on Notre Dame at all. But he, coming here for one year, he feels a big part of this community and feels like that, man, this was a special year. Even if it doesn't lead to to the NFL, right. he'll end up going to medical school and still doing pretty yeah, well. Yeah. So he was, you know, and then obviously, Quentin coming off the basketball floor is a completely different animal. Yeah, I mean, Quentin Rollins, that, that to me is one of the best sports stories, bar none, of the year. Guy that comes in, had played offense mostly in high school football and when he did play. You put him on the defense, and it, it's, it's not just, I mean, it's the story of being one year in college and going to a first-round draft choice, but you and I both know Quentin Rollins and the kind of kid that he is makes that story even better. Yeah, no, he's, he's as hardworking and as humble and, we made some good decisions. One, obviously, he wanted to play, and then we convinced him to stay here because he was kind of looking to maybe go elsewhere. And then just we pride ourselves on kind of being able to evaluate and put the right pieces in the right spots of the puzzle and obviously making the decision to move him to corner and not let him play offense where he played in high school because the NFL scouts can't believe he didn't play DB in high school. I'm like, hey, he's actually played since April, so we, we got about seven months under our belt here. So uh, the future is pretty bright with his upside. Uh, and then obviously who he is and his competitive nature, not just his God-given genetics, but just his competitive nature and pride level of who he is as a player allowed him to come into a really unfamiliar situation walking out on a football field, lining up right. in, at corner. But just he was a kid that competed. And then obviously uh, Coach Hauser and Coach Pulowski did a great job with him of teaching him in a hurry but not giving him too much that – we couldn't get him on the field because they knew early he could play for us. But if we gave him 27,000 things to think of that you'd want a fifth year senior to be thinking about, they did a good job of managing expectations for him mentally. So gave him enough to survive out there, but didn't give him enough where he was confused and out of position. We kind of let him play a little bit at times and, and it really worked out well. And then as the year went on, they kept progressing him. You know, he knew a lot more going in the right. OU game than he did going in that Marshall game. And they just kind of progress him slowly but surely. So it was a unique situation because no one's ever done that where a guy right. walks in and has never played football and never played DB before. So it was pretty well managed by our defensive staff. It was indeed. And, uh, of course, got a pick in the senior bowl as well. Uh, we said goodbye to the senior class a, a, a few months ago. And uh, this, is, this is a class and really the whole team. I mean, we'll talk about some of the returners in a second. But you, you look back at last season and, yeah, the, the wins weren't there. But you had a buy-in from all of the returning players. I mean, whether they were returning sophomores all the way up to the fifth-year seniors, you had a buy-in from those players, and that they really didn't quit in any of those games this year. You 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 brought that attitude back. Yeah, and and it was it was guys like Frazier who everyone saw made tremendous strides because when we got here, he bought in right away. He just wanted to get better. He wanted to learn. He wanted to work, and he just kept asking questions like. Every day he was getting better right in front of our faces, but every day he came in and wanted to get better. And Daywan Scott uh, are two kids that really had really great years for us that had had good careers here but weren't necessarily NFL prospects going into their senior year. And now our guys that are going to most likely be in NFL camps right. uh, because of the work they put in and the buy-in that they had with the new staff of coming in and just listening and trying to learn. And uh, they, we have very smart kids at Miami and they want to be taught the game, and that's kind of what we pride ourselves in. So they, they enjoyed that aspect of really knowing the why is not just what to do, but why we're doing it in a certain way and why if you don't do it that way, it doesn't work out very good. So it, 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 was, it was nice to see those kids develop, the Zach Lewises who really had a great year for us, and, and those kids leave here feeling like they have accomplished something. They kind of have reestablished the bar for Miami football that we're going to be competitive, and now obviously – we know the younger guys, the guys are going to have to come in and start winning games and winning championships and taking us to bowl games. Right. Returning guys uh, you know, that are coming back and, and going to be playing a big part of this football team, I'm sure it affected the recruiting and everything else down the line. But just some names off the top of the head offensively, Rokeem Williams, uh, the receiving core, Rokeem Williams, Sam Martin, uh, Jared Murphy. You've got some wideouts out there on the offensive side of the ball that can certainly uh, continue to help you out. Yes, probably our most talented group overall yeah. on our football team. Um, you know, because day one played a little bit out there. Obviously, Frazier had a great year for us. But then, you know, Sam Martin comes as a freshman, has a very nice freshman season, caught four touchdowns, sets his ties yeah, a school record yeah. in a single game. So you saw glimpses of what he can become, and he's just scratching the surface. Obviously, Murph had a great year for us. And he's, you know, Sam's got three more years. Murph's got three more years. Those are both two freshmen. Then Rokeem really 
from spring to fall and then the beginning of the season, the end of the season, everybody just saw Rokeem continuing to blossom and become the explosive athlete that, that they thought when they, the previous staff has re had recruited him, they really had big expectations for Roe and we're starting to, starting to see that he's in a great place in this offseason to become one of the elite receivers in this league. Um, and then Fred McCray too, who's yeah, kind of exactly. back backup, but he's another kid that we're probably as proud of Fred as anyone because you really stumbled out of the block this year. And usually when you're kind of a backup and you're, you're a part-time player and things don't go where you always kind of fall off. And he did kind of fall off. And then he kind of practiced his way back in. He, he made all conference returner. And by the end of the year, he's making some really key plays for us, not only on special teams, but on the offensive side of the ball. So there's four pretty good returners that have played in games and had success in games. And as we always say, you get confidence by playing well in games. We can pump you up and tell you you're great, but the end yeah. you go out in a game and you get punched in the mouth, there's no one, there's no psychiatrist that's good enough to convince you you're good. But those are all four of those kids coming into this offseason have an idea that I can do it at this level. Now let's work really hard and really, really be impact players for us. Absolutely. Defensively, Kent Kern, obviously a big leader on that side of the ball coming back for you. Bryson Albright on the line. Heath Harding in the secondary. You've got uh, good leaders in each uh, area of the defense. Yeah, and, and again, those are kind of three proven commodities. we got to figure out with Heath. You know, he's so flexible. He played corner, he played, played safety. safety. He's probably more built like a corner, but he's tough enough to play safety and really get him settled. We moved him to safety week three. It was kind of unfair to him, and he had a good year, but I think if he, we leave him there, he could have a great year at safety. I think if we move back to corner, he could have a great year at corner, but we got to get him settled in because he's one of our go-to guys. Obviously, Kern's been one of our best players for the last couple of years, if not right. the best player in our defense. And uh, he played through a bunch of injuries last year, which ended up getting us at the end of the year. He couldn't play the last few weeks against mm -hmm. Central and against OU, which we could certainly use his presence out there. Uh, and then Albright's really the one. He's had a good career, but he is right on the cusp of having a breakout. And it's just size and strength and maintaining his weight, which he's struggled to do during his career here. He's got about six months to get it right and right. really get his, because he's a great, great player for us, and he's already a, a tremendous player within this league. But I really think he could be a national defensive end mm -hmm. if we can get his weight and strength up to the levels that I know he's capable and, and because he can, his length and, and the ability to run and just his passion for the game and how hard he plays. Uh, we know there's a lot of really top end qualities there. We just got to get his weight and strength up to the level to match those. And I think you're talking about a kid that could, could get drafted a year from now. Yeah, I know uh, we talk about motor all the time and Bryson's just got one of those great motors goes at it all the time. Special teams got to talk about Caleb Patterson coming back. Yeah, Caleb and uh, he, he had a nice year and I, I think you know, we, we have an issue on kickoffs and we got to get that rectified either with Caleb or somebody else, but right. obviously place kicking, he's he's been really, really good for us and he's got a ton of confidence and we've got a ton of confidence in him to, to go out and kick the ball and make, make plays for us. Well, we're talking with head coach Chuck Martin and that's kind of the season in review for you. And we'll come back and talk about uh, what the coaching staff and head coach Chuck Martin have learned in their first year here at Miami University. Talk a little bit about coaching philosophy as well. This is our special National Letter of Intent National Signing Day special on Miami All Access and we'll continue with more in just a moment. back here in the offices of head coach Chuck Martin at Yeager Stadium in Oxford and our National Letter of Intent National Signing Day special here on Miami All Access. Happy to have you with us here today. And uh, a coach, a year ago, uh, we were sitting right here, well, actually up in our studio up in Millette Hall, but sitting here talking, getting ready to talk about uh, recruits coming in. And literally, you, you had to hit the ground running and, and everything was so rushed in that first couple of months. This year you had your time to, to kind of get things together. What, what did you learn over the course of that period to, to get ready to, to assign these players and recruit this class? Um, one, you just the knowing really what this university is all about. Last year we, we knew it was a great school. We knew it had great football tradition. Other than that, we didn't know anything about Miami. We're coming in trying to sell kids and 
in four weeks to come play for us. Right. Uh, obviously, <laughs> a year later, you've been in this campus community, you've been in the town of Oxford, you know, very, very tight knit community, you know, tons and tons of people here already kind of everywhere you go you kind of run into the same right, people whether it's right. at the middle school the grammar <laughs> school the hockey game the basketball that's, game you know yeah. wherever you go and that's that's one of the neat things about oxford miami it is a college town people say well it's a college town i don't really think i've ever been in a place that's really a college town until i got here and now right. i understand college town means kind of everything's revolved around the college and everybody has some touch to the colleges you know so it's it's pretty neat the, the academic piece here um, is real, obviously, statistically, you talk about our, you know, the average ACT of students at Miami's is almost a 29, it's like 28.8, you know, so you say when, and I didn't even know that a year ago, I just knew it was a great school, like, I, it's one of the best schools in the country, that was about all I was saying, I didn't really know statistically in the number the one numbers, ranked teachers right. college in America, all right, which really hits home to mom and dads. Mm -hmm. When you talk about, and then you just the article that even came out today about return on investment, because I always say right. we can definitely sell graduation rates, right. all right, because we have incredible retention and graduation right. rates at Miami University. But as I like to tell kids, well, they might even have a closer graduation. I want to know who's making more money when they leave. You exactly. know what I mean? That's yeah. that's, and that you can take real majors here and you can succeed in real majors as a Division One football player, which is rare. A lot of schools yeah. they funnel you into one area, and you may or may not get a degree. But if you get a degree, you've been kind of funneled into the football to, degree, to that degree. Yeah. and yeah. now you're done. And what is your earnings potential? And when you get the article that you're one of the top schools in the country for making money after college, because it's one thing to get a degree, it's another thing even to get a job. Well, we got great placement rate. Okay, well, right. placed you. You know, now what kind of job? And then job. what's my f not only earning out of college, which we're one of the best in the country, but what's my future earnings potential? Right. And now you really know those things. Like you can look at parents right in the eye and look kids right in the eye and say, listen, <laughs> you're making a great choice if you choose Miami for the next 40 years of your life. And here are the facts. This isn't used car salesman fast talking. This isn't negative recruiting. Here's the facts of where we are compared to some of our competitors, and it's really not close. You know, and if parents obviously, not always the high school kids are thinking about life after football. Four or five years down the yeah, line, right? Or four or five minutes down the yeah, line, exactly. you know. But the parents are, as we all know who have kids, exactly. that's all we're concerned about is what school is going to provide for my kid, not what, what is my kid going to provide for the school. So the academic piece, but then it can also be daunting because we don't have all 29 ACTs on our football team. So you start to right. talk about how good a school it is and how you know challenging, and now the kid's like, well, maybe I don't want to go maybe there because, yeah. because I can't do it. And then you learn about our academic support, which is off incredible. the charts. Yeah, like, And I've been at great places that really support, and I've been all places where kids graduate because I'm not going to work at a place where kids don't graduate. Right. All right. But we have such a system in place from A to Z for these kids to be successful academically. And the, the results, you know, we had a 2.91 GPA. We have one kid on our whole football team under 2.0 right now, which I've been right. at small Division three private schools where you weren't getting any money to play football. You were there to get a degree, mm -hmm. and we never had only one kid under 2.0. <laughs> I mean, that's it's unheard of. And anyone, right. you know, people out there may not understand it, but any coach knows they tell that. Like, last summer going into the first summer session, our whole team was eligible. I mean, I've been coaching for 21 years at really Great. good academic schools. Mm -hmm. And I've never gone into a summer where my whole team was out. That's, that's even at really good places. So the academic support is such in place that from A to Z, they teach these kids not only how to be college students, but they teach them how to be professionals. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to carry over beyond college. The, the organization that we teach these kids of how to organize their life because we're not going to trust that 18 year old kid to come in here and figure out okay i got football i got weight training i've got classes this isn't like high school i got monday wednesday friday class i got tuesday thursday classes i got study mm -hmm. table i'm supposed to go to a tutor and i have all these things in place right. how do i manage all of it well these kids aren't ready to manage that in high school they got up they went to school they went to practice, practice. they came home yeah. that's that was their day and now college gives them more freedom which is wonderful we kind of take that freedom away a little bit when they're early yeah. because we want them to have a good schedule and then once they get it figured out that they can manage their own life we'll let them go sophomore junior senior year but there's such a good system in place when i got here to help these kids be successful it's a slam dunk you're going to get one of the best educations in the country and yes, it's going to be more challenging than our schools. We don't lie to them and say it's going to be easy here. It's right, not. It's right. if there's all 29 ACTs in the classroom and you're in there, and it's you're not a 29, yeah. well, <laughs> you better work. Right. But because we have it so organized and it's so prepared for them that they have success, and then the X factor is the teachers, which 
right. every place I've ever been, the teachers have been great. So I'm not, but it's different here. We're the number one rated teacher college in the country, and I've witnessed it and, and felt it and mm -hmm. experienced it firsthand now. Like last year, I might have been able to sell, sell, sell it because it was on a piece of paper, and somebody said, hey, we're the number one right. rated. But, and you ask our kids, like they'll flat out tell you, if mm -hmm. you want to do well in a class at Miami University, mm -hmm. all you have to do is get to know your teacher and let them know that you want to do well. And right. they will support you and help you and tell you, listen, be in my office at 10 and we're going to get this thing figured out. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever class it is, whatever your struggles in math, writing, whatever it is, they will sit down, which again, I'm used to teachers being supportive and all that, but not to the degree where they're reaching out to your students. And it's not just the football players. It's mm -hmm. the whole school they reach out to and they really have a vested interest in these kids and that's why they have the rating they have. But I, I see it firsthand on a daily basis. And our kids will tell you, like, I love my so-and-so team. Well, I didn't he hear that. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's not, I hear it all the time from all sorts of kids in all different majors. It's not one kid in one major. The teachers here at Miami University absolutely refuse to let these kids not to be successful, which it, it, it makes it even more special. Yeah, you know, I know your philosophy. It does take a village, uh, you know, when, when you bring these kids in, but also in the recruiting process. I mean, there, there are so many support staff, and I, I know you appreciate each and every one of them. We can't list them all uh, here uh, on the show, but it really, uh, you, you, you talk about the professors, but also dining and, and health services and all that sort of stuff all plays a big part into it here. And, and you've done such a good job of coordinating all those people, getting all those people to, to help out. And, and obviously, it's, it's a big part of the system. Yeah, and people work at a college. And I know it's a job and it's an income and they've got a family. We're all trying to support our families. But people that come in the college setting, no matter what their role is, they like kids. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the university right on down. You don't choose to go work at a college setting if you don't want to be around kids. If you want to be around kids, don't go to college. We've got 22,000 of them around here. You know what I mean? So, so all these people touch our kids' lives. And certainly I touch them as a head coach, and you have a coordinator, you have a position coach. But if you went through our kids' day of all the people on this campus that touched their lives, the thing that we always do a good job as a staff is understand that if you're touching one of our players' lives, then you're part of our football staff. It doesn't matter if you're a teacher, it doesn't matter if you're an academic guy, it doesn't matter if you're a weight training staff, it doesn't matter if you're a team physician, it doesn't matter if you're President Hodge. Like, our one and only goal here and our one and only promise to these parents and these kids is that we're going to challenge them to be the best they can be and try to help them and guide them to be the best they can be in everything they do and everything they want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't help them in science. You know, I can't help them get the degree they want. I can't help them with class scheduling. I can't help them when their swipe card isn't working. So trying to bring all these people in, because these people already love our kids. They love the kids before we got here. All these people on college campuses everywhere I've been, now trying to get them to really understand that they're part of our football family because if, if one of our kids, a freshman D tackle, has a bad day academically, it affects everything in his life. And if something bad happens back at home, it affects his whole life. And we all have different personalities and we all love these kids and we all support these kids, but I may click with you, but I may not click with the next guy. It, who knows? It might be one of my assistants. Right. It might be one of the academic people. It might be Coach Harker in the weight room. It might be Paul down in the training room. We'll, we'll strike up a relationship based on just personalities or interests, and that will become our kid's go-to guy. Mm -hmm. And i got to have a relationship now. If, if somebody's going to trust Paul down the training room more than me, which happens, right. I can be unrealistic and say, well, they're all just going to always come to me with all that's – all these people affect these kids' lives, so we all just say, hey, we're all in it for these kids. If we all understand every decision we make is for these kids all the time and supporting them and pushing them to be successful, then we always get along. We always feel part of it. And, and when we win the championships here at Miami, this whole campus is going to feel part of helping Miami football get back to where it belongs. Well, we're well on the way. National Signing Day, our special will continue here in just a moment. Yes, uh, we have over 20, uh, I think 24, 25, 26 signees uh, today. I haven't gotten uh, the latest totals here, but we'll, we'll release all of those to you, and uh, we'll begin uh, with uh, our first set of signees here in just a few moments. We're here in the uh, Jaeger Stadium offices of head coach Chuck Martin. Our National Signing Day special will continue in just a moment. You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk Football NLI Signing Day Special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank.
You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk Football NLI Signing Day Special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. Welcome back into our National Signing Day special here at Yeager Stadium, the offices of head coach Chuck Martin. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, obviously joined by the uh, coach of the Red Hawks. And uh, coach, uh, I got to interrupt you. Pretty cool to have Air Parsege. Oh, yeah, all these guys and, behind and us. Air is running the ball and Bo's in a three point stance right behind me, right here, which is pretty, pretty amazing. I think that. This Bo right there. So yeah, we got Bo. Pretty here. awesome office they, office they put together for me. Here. Absolutely. This is great stuff. We're going to take a tour of this here in just a little while and uh, get you get you a look at the We cut Coach office. Harbaugh's head off, so we apologize to Coach Harbaugh. Sorry, number, number eight in the corner. <laughs> we, but you'll see it. When we show you the tour, we didn't cut his head off on the tour. Oh, so. you'll, you'll see it all. Let's let's talk about the recruiting philosophy. Obviously, as you said at the very open, these are your guys. These, these are the chance for you and your staff to get out there. Uh, uh, we talked about the returners. Obviously, that plays a role in what you're looking for. Tell us about the philosophy and going out and getting these kids this year. Yeah, A number one is just looking for the most competitive kids on the planet. I mean, that, that trumps everything. That's, you know, you start off and you watch tape, and obviously you don't continue on with kids that don't have good tape. If you didn't like them at all on tape, you don't even, that's the end of the recruiting process. So that's where it starts. But the second piece then is to start to do your homework and, and do your research about what that kid is all about. And, and how competitive is he? And we're looking for over the top. We're not just looking for competitive people. We're looking for over the top competitors. That when we talk to their high school coach or we talk to their mom or dad or we talk to anyone in the high school, like the kid has a problem like with competing. Like the kid right. is zany, like gets up in the morning, wants to be better than everybody in the world today. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of really competitive kids, but there's we're looking for the ones that really, really, really want to do something better than anyone else in the country and want to have huge dreams, you know, big dreams in football, big dreams academically, big dreams socially, and, and want to change the world, you know, and every, well, you, I don't care. Like, I want kids that want to be better than everybody. I said, we're going to have the best student athletes in the country here at Miami. We're going to have kids that end up playing in the NFL at a high level and then leaving the NFL and going to become doctors. That, yeah. that can happen at Miami University. It's gonna happen at Miami University, you know? And then we want, so that's the biggest piece. Then obviously we want size. Mm -hmm. Football, there's 120 yards by 53 and a third, and if your whole team's six foot seven and runs four three, you probably got a pretty good football team. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we knew when we got here at Denver, we were the smallest diminutive, diminutive, I don't even know if that's the correct yeah. word, but I'm not very good in English. I can do good in math, but football team on the planet, not division one team. Like right. we we're smaller than my division two teams I coached. Like it was crazy how small we are at every, every position. Yeah. You know, our DBs are small, our receivers are small. Like, so trying to get bigger and then obviously the bigger frame we can bring in that coach Hark and his staff who is doing an incredible job for us can really go to work. Mm -hmm. You know, we got one freshman here right now, Ian Lever and he's six foot seven and 200 whatever pounds. And Hark's looking at me salivating like, okay, now yeah, here's, a big, here's a big piece of clay and I get him for the next four or five years. Right. We can right. have him look like Mount Everest when he leaves here if he's willing to put in the work, you know, mm -hmm. and everything like that versus the six foot one kid right. that Hark looks at and says, well, we're going to get him stronger and he's going to get quicker and more flexible. But his ceiling is very close to where he is right now, where mm -hmm. we like to have those big, long kids at every position that we can really go to work. We really think we're good at player development. We got a great strength staff. We're really good with our coaching staff at developing football players. So kids that have an upside are kids that we're really excited about. Let's break it down. Uh, 26 signees we're going to talk about today. Uh, 
five offensive line, five defensive line, four DBs, uh, three wideouts, three running backs, two uh, quarterbacks, two linebackers, a tight end, and a kicker in the class this year. And, uh, you know, pretty much uh, all across the board, uh, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different states that these kids are coming from. Tell us about the philosophy recruiting-wise regionally. I know you like to get Ohio kids, kids from the, from the southwest Ohio, uh, southwest Indiana, that sort of thing. But you really reached out and get the best athlete. Yeah, and recruiting has changed because of the Internet and access to film that, you know, you can recruit a much wider space. And we talk about all the time, but... I go outside my office and look at all the all-conference players, and almost all those kids are Midwest kids. Not there isn't right. kids from other parts of the country. So we know our bread is going to be buttered in the Midwest. And I get a lot from, hey, uh, how about any Ohio kids you got? And I always tell those people that attack me at the basketball game or attack me at Kroger, attack me at B-dubs with, how many Ohio kids you got? I always try to tell them, like, one, we're going to get as many Ohio kids as we can, but I don't even view it in the terms of Ohio. Right. Because as I always tell those people that are attacking me about Ohio kids, like, Indianapolis is an hour and a half from me. Cleveland's four hours. Right. So are you going to be upset with me if I get a really good student athlete from Indianapolis? Louisville's two hours. So we kind of, as a staff, and our philosophy is we group the Midwest as Ohio. So when you talk about Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Chicago, mm -hmm. down into northern Kentucky, it's kind of going to be our recruiting place that we do and if you look at our signees most of our very high percentage kids are midwest kids and we had 16 committed kids before the season and i think 13 of those kids were midwest kids so we're not only going to recruit very heavily in this area but they're going to be the first kids we recruit right. that's that's our promise to high school coaches because they there's a lot of high school coaches in ohio that really wants miami to get their kids again because he's like we got kids everywhere but we're not sending them to miami anymore which obviously is a part of the reason we were where we were but we're going to recruit those kids first. Like mm -hmm. we've got probably, I don't know the total, but 50 offers out to juniors mm -hmm. and they're all Midwest kids. So the right. first, first kids we're offering and probably our second tier offers, which will come out here in the next week, right. another 20 to 30 kids, the first kids that get the first crack at Miami are all the kids in our backyard. In backyard. You know, yeah. Now we're going to get as many of those as we can. Sometimes we'll have a kid and we'll fill up out of position. He'll want to get to us later, and we might have gotten an out-of-state kid later, and then shame on them that we gave you a chance to come to Miami and you, you dragged your feet. We end up with a kid from Georgia or Carolina or Texas. But we recruit our backyard first, and we recruit it hard. And I know we've changed the opinions of the coaches in a very short time, not only in Ohio but Michigan and Illinois and Indiana, that we are recruiting the backyard, and that's going to be the basis of our football team. All right, we're going to break it down by position as we go through the day here today, and we're going to begin with the big guys up front, first on the offensive line, as we take a look at some of our signees. The first one we want to talk about, out of Loveland, Ohio. You talk about out of the backyard, Ian Lever from Loveland, Ohio uh, High School, and 6'6", 295 pounds. Tell us about him, Coach. Yeah, and even Lee, Ian has the worst signing day of any of our commits today because as everyone was waking up and – we're calling all our recruits last night, and it's exciting, and we're making sure everything's good, and you got your letters, and you got your NLI, and you got your financial aid tender, and you know how to sign it and date it, and when's, when's going to be your big hoopla at school tomorrow? So we come in, we're all excited, we got our donuts, you know, we're starting our weight loss program tomorrow because right. we need our donuts on signing day, and Ian's in our weight room with Coach Hark at 7.30 in the morning. So he kind of had the early enrollees kind of get a little bit gypped on the old signing date. So I called him at 7.30, told him just, hey, we're just as excited about you. And, but he's, he is doing great. He is obviously from Loveland High School, has a great program just right in our backyard, right down the road. He is a humongous individual, 6'6", 295. And you always see that and you think you're going to see a 6'4 kid and you probably see a 6'7 kid when you get to Ian. He is yeah. a mountain of a man, comes from an unbelievable family in a high school program that prides itself on toughness and getting after people. And you, you can see on a lot of his clips, um, he's a one, he's a monstrous human oh, being. Yes. He's yeah. got a huge upside, but he's got really good feet for a guy his size. And he's a guy that committed to us early, believed in Miami as a school for one, their family, and he's a great student. Two, believed in our staff, particularly believed in Coach Barnett as an offensive line coach, that mm -hmm. he could coach him as good as anybody in the country. And that's what we try to convince kids that I don't – you may say there's a higher level of football out there. It doesn't mean you're going to get coached better. Right. I coach at that level. I've coached at this level. So don't, don't tell me you're going to get coached better just because you went to, quote, unquote, a BCS school or Power 5 school. That doesn't mean you got a better chance to get the NFL. You might have a better chance coming to Miami and playing right. for me and my staff because we got a pretty darn good track record of developing kids. So I get into that all the time. Well, he wants to play at the highest level. And I always come right back with, well, that's the NFL. Yeah. 
So you better be darn certain that that guy can train you and, and, and develop you better than we can. Because if you can't, you might have played at a higher level in college, and my guys at Miami might play at the highest level when it really comes to, and they don't pay you to play in college. Right. So we, we attack that pretty much head on about this highest level uh, sometimes that we get pretty agitated about when people bring that up. So we're, we're really excited about Ian. And again, a super offensive team as a junior. He was a preseason uh, first team by J.J. Huddle.com, graduated with honors from Loveland High School, and the one early enrollee, yeah. he is, as Coach said, yeah. already working out. And won a state championship as <laughs> yeah. a junior. As a junior, And, yeah. and uh, really comes from a winning program, and, and coach, coach does a great job. Coach Canfield Ford does a great job there. And um, so having kids that, have been pushed and have been challenged and come from winning programs and played in big games, playing state title games, a pretty big game. That all helps in their transition to college. Well, that's one of the things we can talk about. Now, out of the 26 players assigning their national letter of intent today, 19 of them were team captains. And moving on to Dublin, Ohio, again, another Midwest player, 6'3", 290-pound offensive lineman, Sam McCullen from Kaufman, Dublin Kaufman High School. Yeah, and Dublin Kaufman is one of the premier programs in the state of Ohio and has right. always been, has produced many tremendous college football players and is always a perennial powerhouse and coach Crabtree does an unbelievable job. Sam's a late blooming kid and he's he is a gonna be an absolute monster here. He's tremendous tremendous student. Uh, brother plays in the Ivy League. Could have easily went to the Ivy League academically. If he didn't play football he probably would be in the Ivy League or right back at Miami. This would have been a, a school he'd have chose. He was, I don't know, 260 pounds as a junior. He's over 290 right now, and he is growing leaps and bounds. And he's a, you know, he's a kid that if, if he would have been one more year early on the growth chart, he'd be playing for Probably the Buckeyes else. or somewhere yeah. else. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is that type of kid. He's smart and he's tough, comes from a wonderful family. His younger brother, interesting note, beat me best two out of three in floor hockey on the home visit, which oh, I'm still wow. irritated about. So... I just want to shout out to him that there will be a rematch and he will go down in, <laughs> in knee hockey. Uh, so he's, there's a family of athletes in, in the McCollum household and it's an incredible family. And again, 4.0 student from one of the best high schools and a great football player. You're not going wrong. As many kids as I can get in my program like Sam, we're going we're gonna to win a bunch of games in a hurry around here. Yeah, just looking at his bio, his team went 28-7 and seven in three seasons as a starter, including an 11-1 campaign as a senior. And that's Sam McCollum from uh, Dublin uh, Kaufman High School in Dublin, Ohio. Moving to Illinois, a little west of here, 6'4", 280-pounder offensive lineman from Lake Villa, Illinois, Ryan Mullen. Tell us about Ryan, Coach. Ryan's a supremely talented kid, uh, state, state thrower in track season, yeah. over four points students, been already admitted to our Honors College, which is really, 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 really difficult to get into Miami's Honors College. Yeah. Um, he said, I just got in the Honors College and they, they gave me $60,000 in scholarships and aid. So I immediately hit him back and said, great, then we don't have to we use a scholarship, you know, <laughs> which he didn't think was so funny. And I, I, I thought like, hey, he's off the books, you know, <laughs> ship him over the Honors College. But uh, unbelievable kids played hockey growing up, uh, competitive volleyball player growing up, offensive center, uh, track athlete. I'm in his home visit was one of my favorite home visits because he's from Chicago and I'm from Chicago. Right. So us Chicagoans kind of act and think of life. So me and his dad are watching the Blackhawks on TV because they had mm -hmm. been here a ton of times. It wasn't, he had committed a long time. It wasn't one way to go in there and actually work. We were just enjoying right. hanging out together. And I've never had a kid on a home visit. He breaks out and starts doing homework. And he's apologized. like, coach, I've got all this stuff. I've and I was like, hey, the heck with you. You can go upstairs and do as go much as right you want. Ahead. Me and Dad are going to watch a Hawks game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll lock up and you have. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's always good when you're at a place like Miami and kids start to do their homework on their home visit because that's the type of student he is. Oh, so absolutely. Uh, incredible f football player, really, really good feet, really great hips, really athletic, and tremendous hand strength. So uh, we are very excited. He's going to fit in at Miami great. He's everything Miami University is looking for in a football player. Yeah, both of the last guys we talked about, Sam McCullen, Ryan Mullen, are among many in this class, as you mentioned, are two-sport athletes. And, you know, again, we can harken back to Quentin Rollins. I know you like that two-sport athlete. Yeah, one, it's just the competitive nature of a kid that keeps competing all year round, particularly when you go to state and shot and disc, and then also you're a star football player. It's not you're just hanging out on the track right. team because it's fun, you're actually going there to compete. Then two, it just shows how talented some of these kids are. This, you know, Mullen played competitive volleyball growing up and like right. he's supposed to, and you know, he did the track thing. He played, he played defense and hockey. Mm -hmm. Like 
he had to pick which sports he was going to continue playing. So now you're talking just a supremely talented kid. The big thing Ohio State came out with all these kids that were two-sport kids. That's obviously working pretty good for the Buckeyes. It just shows how talented. So as opposed to the one-dimensional kid that's just good at one thing, he's really not good at anything else, he's probably not as talented as a kid that can do all these different sports. All right, let's move on now down across the Ohio River. Covcath High School, Park Hills, Kentucky, the home of a 6'5", 280-pound offensive lineman, Sam Muir. Tell us about Sam. Sam, another late blooming kid. He, he self-proclaimed as a sophomore, didn't ever dream he would be good enough to play college football. Mm -hmm. And then got in the weight room and started growing up and started maturing and had a really good junior year and then really blossomed uh, during his senior year. And another kid that I saw him a year ago and he's a shadow of what his body looks like right now. And even from his visit in December, to his visit when I home visit him in January, he looked like a different kid. It's like every time you see this kid, his body shape and he's he's uh, growing out of his youth and, and becoming a man right in front of our eyes. And obviously, Cub Cath is one of the premier programs uh, in the state of Kentucky. And here's a kid that I always say, kids, like, are you going to count the kid that's less than an hour down the road from my university? I can't, you know, I know it doesn't say right. Ohio after Covington Catholic, but this kid's right in our backyard, the greater Cincinnati area. Everybody knows about Covington Catholic. Say, great historic program. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and comes from a very competitive family. Uh, both parents are, you know, sometimes it's mom or dad that's really competitive and you go in the Muir household and you see the dynamics and <laughs> they're both really <laughs> they're both. I'm like, which one's running the rooster? They're both <laughs> running. So Sam, Sam's one that when we get on him, when he comes here, he's yeah. not going to blink. Oh, yeah. Because oh, I've, yeah. been at, I've been at the lunch table with him and mom and dad are not playing around with him. So oh, very we're good. very excited. Very he, good. He's got great feet, great athleticism. Once we get him out of his, his, his youth, youth body and get him into his man's body, he's got a chance to be a great, yeah, great player. And, for us. and again, we are just getting started here uh, talking about our student athletes, but already we've been talking about two sport athletes, Honors College. Sam Muir is one of those athletes. He was a five, one of five finalists for the State of Kentucky's That's My Boy Award given to the player that demonstrates good character, academic excellence, and community service. That's a statewide award. Just speaks to the character of the guys we're going after. Yeah, and we always have somebody up for that award in the college part, and I went to the yeah. banquet last year, and it's it's a who's who of the most squared away human beings on the planet. Like I went and I had to speak at and all these high school kids that were up for this award have already accomplished more than I've accomplished in my life and are way more mature and way more smart than I'll ever be. It was, it was an amazing night. So for him to be in that list of people up, the people that know that, that that's my boy award, it's, it's the best of the best mm -hmm. uh, around around the Cincinnati area. Our final offensive lineman in this class of new signees comes from Livonia, Michigan, Churchill High School. 6'5", 275-pound offensive lineman Matt Skabinski. Tell us about Matt. Yeah, one, he obviously comes from the suburbs of, of, of Detroit, an area that we're very familiar with from all my days in, in the state of Michigan. And uh, he also s starts on the basketball team. You got a six foot five, 27 pound offensive lineman running up and down the basketball court, and he actually can play a little bit. I'm thinking he has a future future NBA, but I don't think Coach Coop's going to want him out there. But uh, he can actually play and move. And uh, another big frame kid, another tremendous student. He's going to be an engineering major here. Uh, he's he's kind of got all those boxes checked when it comes to Miami. So right. uh, tremendously talented and. Obviously, we're going to be a lot bigger on our offensive line here in years to come because this is what they look like right now, and we haven't even got them yet. They're halfway right. through their senior year. We get them here. They're still growing. They're still developing. Then we get them with Coach Hark. We're going to have one of those lines that the best lines in our league when you see the top lines, which you've seen them all, come in this league that you're six foot five and you're 300-plus and you're big and strong and you right. can knock people around, and that's – you know, obviously anybody that watched this issue, we couldn't do that. We could hang in games and we can whip it around a little bit and we could kind of run when they didn't think we were going to run. But mm -hmm. when it came to one yard and they knew we needed to get it, we usually couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Right. So that's that's the biggest piece to our puzzle is getting that old line right. That was the first thing I said, again, we're going to have the biggest, strongest, most athletic, most intelligent, toughest offensive line in our league, and that's how we're going to win the league. Talking about Matt Skabinski out of Livonia, Michigan. Uh, he was a uh, team captain, one of those 19 team captains that uh, we talk about uh, in this class and uh, ranked as scout.com's uh, scout number one offensive tackle in Michigan. And, and you alluded to it, Coach, in all five of these offensive linemen, size, athleticism, and, and watching their video, just their competitive fire, their physical offensive linemen. Yeah, and they come from physical programs. Mm -hmm. They come from teams that run the football and pride themselves on knocking people around. I think the lowest GPA in the group is like a 3-4. Wow. 
So that's the, the, the problem child in that group's got a 3-4, and they're all from tremendous high schools. Well, that's our offensive linemen that have signed their national letters of intent to play for Miami University today. We'll come back a little bit later on. We have more athletes to tell you about. Uh, but today's uh, event, our National Signing Day special, is brought to you through uh, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. And when we come back, we'll talk with Kevin McKeon from Miami Savings Bank about uh, their role in today's program and uh, their role in the city of Oxford. Just a uh, great institution here in the city of Oxford. And we'll talk to Kevin when we come back. Our National Signing Day special continues on Miami All Access after this. You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk football NLI signing day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk football NLI signing day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. And we welcome you back into our National Letter of Intent National Signing Day special here at Jaeger Stadium in the offices of head coach Chuck Martin. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Today's special is brought to you through the uh, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank here in Oxford, one of the great partners of Miami University Athletics. And I am joined by the assistant vice president of Miami Savings Bank, Kevin McKeon, joins us. And uh, Kevin, uh, you've been around Oxford for such a long time here. We appreciate your support. Uh, Miami and IMG College, uh, appreciate that support through the years. I mean, you've been a part of this program from the very beginning. Uh, as we re rebuild the program, obviously taking a step in the right direction uh, again here today, uh, that differentiates, uh, you know, in a program that differentiates itself from the MAC. Tell us a little bit about Miami Savings Bank and what differentiates Miami Savings Bank from the rest of that banking sector. Well, first of all, we're really proud to be involved with uh, Miami University Athletics and being the sponsor of this event since the outset. Um, six years now, I believe it is. Um, so it's uh, great to be on board and uh, to help out with this. Um, what differentiates us from the other banks? Uh, we're a community bank in its truest form. Mm -hmm. um, we are in your community. We serve your community. We are involved in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the other programs. Obviously, you're heavily involved in uh, Miami Athletics, but what other programs do you get involved in within, within the Oxford community? Oh, uh, well, the bank, uh, we sponsor uh, the um, Oxford Summer Music Festival about uh, 14 years now, 13, 14 right. years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a sponsor of Talawanda Dramas, mm -hmm. uh, also about uh, 12, 13 years there. The Oxford Homeschool uh, Co-op Theater Program, we've been doing that for a number of years as well. Um, personally, um, I was going to say, I've well, been uh, um, my uh, second Ooh. term on city council and uh, finishing up uh, a little over a year as mayor of uh, the city of Oxford. So I've been doing that. Uh, uh, serve on a number of different boards and commissions, and I've uh, served on different uh, nonprofit boards around the community as well over the years. Yeah, we're working in the athletic department, we always talk about there's not enough time in the day. So you're an assistant vice president of the bank. I know you're in there all the time and after hours. You're on city council. You're the city of uh, Oxford's mayor. Uh, how do you find time to do it all? Do a little bit of everything all day long. Yeah, <laughs> that's very, very true. Uh, obviously, I've known you for a long time. Uh, we go yep. back to my radio days here at the radio Correct. station. Uh, let's talk about you know your association with Miami with Miami Athletics personally. What's uh, tell me tell me what's your favorite athletic moment that you remember, and maybe your favorite moment just uh, involved in the city of Oxford. 
Well, my favorite athletic moment would have to be uh, probably Big Ben's first game at Jaeger mm -hmm. Stadium. And uh, I'll probably bend your uh, memory a little bit. I, was that the UC game probably? May have been. Yeah. 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 Um, I came away from that um, knowing I just witnessed something special. Mm -hmm. um, it was undoubt, you know, it was without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I came home. My wife uh, goes to about half the games uh, with me, and I came home. I said, oh, you've got to go. You get, yeah. We've got something special here. You know, it's not. Uh, you knew the next few years was going to be pretty yeah, good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Miami football obviously taking a lot of steps forward here over the course of last year. Uh, the new indoor facility, uh, you know, with uh, the hiring of Chuck, uh, the soon to be uh, developed Student Athletic Performance Center. What excites you the most about this program moving forward, and how does the success of that program impact the town of Oxford as a whole? Well, I think the biggest thing that I've seen is. Um, the ath athletes and the, the coaches are out in the community. Mm -hmm. um, they're uh, becoming involved. You're seeing them out active and doing things at events. Uh, they're helping out. Uh, Coach Martin uh, and his players, uh, it's all of athletics. It's not just the football team and players and the coach. Mm -hmm. uh, you're seeing them out and about and doing things much more than I did. I've been in town, I guess, 16, 17 years, right. and it's a, it's a wholesale change over the last two, three years. Yeah. Let's, t let's talk about Miami Savings Bank, obviously a full-service bank. Tell us about the services and, and how people can get a hold of you or where they can go to uh, use Miami Savings Bank, well, get involved. We, we're a good old-fashioned bank. Uh, I like to liken us to. Uh, it's a wonderful life. Uh, uh, if you deposit money with us, we're going to lend it out to uh, your neighbors, uh, someone in the, the community. We do things the old-fashioned way. Uh, we got all the, the traditional products, checking, savings, but we also have online banking, internet bill pay. Uh, we do mortgages, commercial loans, commercial lending, inter investment loans. Um, all our mortgage decisions are made locally. They're not sent off to some tower in New York City or Chicago. We also uh, retain the servicing on all our own loans. Um, uh, even though now uh, in the modern era we are selling some loans, mm -hmm. uh, we retain the servicing. So you're not going to dial 1-800 and have to punch a button, bunch of buttons. Yeah, well, so, makes and, a big difference. And where can they get a hold of you? Get a hold of us on the line is the easiest way, miamisavingsbank.com. Uh, you can call us locally here at 523-7711. Or uh, any of our other branches are also uh, listed online there. Well, Kevin, we appreciate uh, you being with us today, number one, but also appreciate the long term uh, association with Miami Savings Bank and Miami Athletics. Thank you so Thank much. You, Kevin McKeon, ass Assistant Vice President at Miami Savings Bank, joining us. We'll come back with more of our National Signing Day special here on Miami All Access. But first, this. You're watching the 2015 Miami Red Hawk Football NLI Signing Day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. You're watching the 2015 Miami Red Hawk Football NLI Signing Day Special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. Glad to have you with us here on our National Letter of Intent National Signing Day special for the Miami Red Hawk football program. 
Here from the uh, offices of head coach Chuck Martin at Yeager Stadium, I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, rejoined by the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, and we will reveal some more of our athletes here. And uh, again, let's uh, talk about uh, the position here. We're looking at uh, defensive line here. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five signees that we're going to talk about. Uh, again, uh, obviously you were looking for size and physicality on the offensive side. What are you looking for on the defensive side? Size and, size and physicality. Yeah, so a bunch of <laughs> length, size, stuff we can develop, some fast twitch muscle fiber. And then D-line's different because you're looking for some bigger guys inside that are basically run stoppers. If you can find a nose guard or a three technique that can rush a passer, he's probably going to be a first-round draft choice. Those are very rare. So you're kind of looking for a different body type in there, maybe a little lower center of gravity, maybe not as much length on the inside because they got to take on all those double teams. But yeah. obviously, you got to be super strong to be able to do that. So you're looking for some run stoppers, and you're looking for some edge guys that can get after the quarterback. And you know We have an issue with depth at our D-line already. We mm -hmm. couldn't rotate. We don't have guys that can come in and compete at the level we need them to. Right. And then we have four seniors up there. So it's a, coming into next year, it's a dire need that this class be a very large class and a very talented class where these kids not only have a chance to get in the mix and get in our two deep right away, but we're really looking for kids that easily two years from now are going to be starters as, as sophomores or redshirt freshmen. So this was a huge position need, not based on just depth, but also the kids coming back are all kids that are going to be leaving us. Yeah, the thing that I noticed in watching the film uh, for all of these players is their physicality. I think you're going to be impressed when you take a look at them. We'll first head to Wheaton, Illinois, a 6'6", 220-pound defensive end, Quinn Calcagno. Tell us about Quinn. Quinn's a long, fast He's kind of the one kid that I saw on tape that reminded me of a younger version of Albright. Really, really long edge guy and can really run with an incredible motor, as you'll see. This kid can really, really run as you're watching him run there at six foot six. He is going to be huge. He probably weighed 190 as a junior. He's up to 220. He's probably going to be putting on 15 to 20 to 30 pounds a year for about the next three or four years. He, I'm hopeful this kid ends up being a 260 to 280 pound kid. You're watching him right here run down a tailback in high school. This is and incredible. A kid that we think so. And it's not just his speed, but it's his effort. And then he's a 3'8 and a 27. He's going to be in the Farmers Business School uh, someday and get a business degree f from Miami. And he's going to be great in life after football. So just we're looking for all these boxes. But when you talk about competitiveness, this guy jumps off the tape of just how hard he plays. And then he jumps off the tape of the upside. He's a guy that Hark looks at and goes, okay, yeah. <laughs> you're 220 now. <laughs> I'm going to have you at 270, and you're still going to be running like this, and you're going to be a guy that, wow, why is he, why is he in the MAC? Why wasn't he in the Big Ten? Mm -hmm. Well, he was, he was a later blooming kid, and he, he's got a tremendous upside. And then he gives us some edge speed, as you'll see from, from this tape, a kid that can really run. And then that length, there's a lot of plays on tape where it looks like, Guy's two or three yards outside him, but he's got six six height, but he's got a yeah. six six wingspan, wingspan too. And then he's reaching out and making plays. And it just I always say when I watched our defense a year ago, the field looked huge. Yeah. We just don't take up enough space just lining up. I'm not saying right. run around and getting off blocks. I'm saying when we line up eleven guys, there's a lot of air in our defense because We've got small. five, eight, five, nine safeties, and we got short corners, and we got yeah. small. We have to get longer just by alignment to take up space, and that's what a six six kid that can run. It's a lot different than a six-foot kid that can run. So here's a kid that we really love that has that edge, not an inside guy that we think is going to be that run stopper, but be the edge to the defense. And he's also kid athletic enough we can drop him into coverage. We like to do some three-down stuff like we did some with Albright. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy with Albatross can drop in the flat and maybe doesn't even know what he's doing, but he's so long, you look over there, not a whole lot of room to throw the ball in that weak side flat. Absolutely. And again, some of the accolades uh, for Quinn. Uh, Chicago Green Division, outstanding defensive player of the year as a senior. Finished his senior uh, year with 101 tackles, 15 tackles for loss and 13 and a half sacks. Our next defensive lineman comes from St. Louis, Missouri, St. John Vianney High School. I hope I got that right. 6'3", 235-pound defensive end, Jordan Hardwick. Tell us about Jordan. Jordan is a tremendous talent. Uh, he is he is big, strong, athletic, and a bundle of fast twitch. He, he's got a chance. He could, he could play tight end, too. He can run like the wind. He's going to be a 270-pound kid that can – I think he could play some inside. I think he can play off the edge. I think he play a six technique. I think he play a seven. I think he play a nine. Uh, comes from an incredible family. Viani was either voted the top high school in Missouri or maybe the top high school in the country. It's one of the best high schools around. And uh, another kid that competitive – 
over the top competitive at times we might have to tone him down because uh, he can at times get get upset out there but he's overcome a lot of obstacles in his life he comes from an incredible wonderful family that has really done a great job of helping him get where he want to go and uh, he wants to be a great player for him but i also know he wants to be a great player to not let down some of the people that have really helped him through the years so he's He's probably the kid in this class I'm closest to already, just oh, really? based on the recruitment and based mm -hmm. on um, just my personality is probably kind of goofy and zany and his personality is kind of goofy. <laughs> we just kind of hit it off from day one. And I have a great relationship with all these kids, but he's, he's one that he's kind of like a kind of adopted nephew or son for me that I'm really looking forward to not only having him watch him play football here, but watch him continue to develop as a person, continue to develop as a student. And uh, just he'll be a fun guy. To have. You'll, he'll know everyone pretty quick on this Absolutely. Campus. This is, uh, again, Jordan Hardwick, Metro Catholic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He also earned second team All-State as a defensive end his senior season. We head up I-75 for our next signee from uh, Archbishop Alter High School, played in the GCL, a 6'3", uh, 231-pounder from Kettering, Ohio, Dean Lemon. Yeah, love Dean. He's only 17 years old he legitimately should be a junior and thank god he's not because if he's a junior to me he's a national kid mm -hmm. uh he's a bundle of fast twitch 6'3, 235 he'll be 250 before he hits his campus in july and he's going to keep growing he's got huge features huge hands uh you can see him run he was a tremendous tremendous football player on a great great football team and obviously people around here know Kettering Alter High School and mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough I recruited their quarterback my last quarterback in Notre Dame League Zaire is from Alter so I I know the program and we're looking for a guy that can rush the passer and anybody that's watched Miami football recently quarterbacks have a tendency to stand back there and <laughs> survey the situation exactly. for a long time and if there's no one open typically they can run and here's a kid we think can get off the quarter but I think he's going to grow into also where he can be an inside outside kid really? I just think he's going to be big and physical to play the three but athletic enough to play the dn so uh a kid that i could envision moving around based on downs later in his career not early we're going to let him grow up and but a kid that you can play inside you can play outside depending on what matchups you like for the kid because you can see how how twitchy he is and how quickly he can get off block so uh dad's a longtime coach mm -hmm. certainly knows very successful certainly knows the game uh mom's tremendously successful and comes from a great family and he's another one that I'm not going to have any problems with Dean. If there's any oh, problem, yeah. I call him to mom and things will be, things will be situated, care of, huh? situated pretty quickly. So the, 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 not the, anticipating any, but he's, he comes from a family that's still, still your professional from the day you, you're born to the day you leave my house, oh, and they've yeah. taught him very well. Well, the thing that I notice about Dean and all of the other defensive uh, ends and defensive linemen here is their deceptive speed. I mean, you see Dean Lemon running across the film uh, uh, there and just so quick getting into the backfield, especially for a big and getting bigger guy. Yeah, no, he's he's got – we talk about short space quickness because – you know, D line, I mean, you don't care what their 40 is. I mean, they right. don't, if they run 40 yards, we stink, you know. And that's <laughs> part of the problem we've had is we got D linemen chasing guys for, chasing 40, guys yards. for 40 yards. <laughs> but you want that short space quickness, whether it's a run player closing space on the quarterback, they get off a block. Can they get two to five yards in a hurry to close and get that sack? Or they don't close as good and the ball gets off and it's a touchdown, you're that close to the sack. And the same yeah. thing running flat down the line to chase the running back. A lot of times they either get them in the first two or three steps, they don't get them. So that short space quickness is obviously. Uh, a key for, for all D linemen to have success at this level. Very good. Let's talk about our next recruit from New Albany, Ohio, and New Albany High School. 6'5", 260 pound defensive lineman, Jack Schroer. Yeah, Jack, Jack's a versatile athlete. Unfortunately, he got, he got nicked up and missed, missed a big portion of his senior year. Uh, so some of these clips are even junior year clips. Mm -hmm. But he's another bigger kid, and he's, he gives us some versatility. It's just gonna be interesting to see how much he grows and continues to grow. I think, he could end up definitely being a three technique and inside kid. He played defensive in high school. We like to play three down. We didn't do as much three down as we eventually will do here. Right. He's made to order for our four technique. That was our initial draw. You see him right here, two gapping and actually doing some of the things that we ask in our three down, mm -hmm. which if a kid hasn't done it, it takes longer to train. He's trained right here to play off this block. That looks just like our stack front. So he's a guy that we really feel like in our three downs going to have a leg up on all these other kids. Even these other kids are talented because he's played that two gapping technique and used his hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's just a matter of continuing to let him grow, whether he stays inside or goes outside of how big is he going to get? Because again, he's, I think he's going to be a mountain before he leaves this place. And again, uh, some of the honors, uh, second team all conference as a senior selected to play in the Ohio North South all-star game. 
and uh, team advanced to the 2013 state regional final. Uh, just outstanding uh, signee from New Albany, Ohio. Our final uh, defensive lineman that we're going to talk about comes just right up from uh, right up 27, Richmond, Indiana, Richmond, Indiana High School. And we talk about size and physicality. Watching this player's tape, uh, I think it defines it. 6'1", 295 pound defensive tackle, Nate Trawick from Richmond High School. He's over, he's over a 650 pound squatter. Yeah. He's over a 450 pound bencher. He is incredibly quick and athletic. He's 38 and one right now, ranked number one in the state of Indiana heavyweight wrestler. He will, he was planning on winning the shot put this spring yeah. in the state of Indiana. <clears throat> And he's an incredibly great student. So mm -hmm. this kid, when you start to check boxes, and uh, not as long, but he plays inside, and we don't mind the shorter guy inside because, like we talked earlier, they got to take on all these double teams. And if you're high on double teams, as you all know, you end up back by the safeties. Right. So low center of gravity at his position at times can be a, a very, very huge advantage as long as you have the strength. And he'll he'll be the strongest kid in our program as soon as he shows up this summer. We don't have right. anyone that can bench or squat with this kid in our. And there's not many in the country that can bench or squat with this kid. And. He's like a machine. Like you talk to this kid, and he is motivated every single day to be the best. All he's talking about is, is his opportunity to fight for a state championship in wrestling, and that's all he's focused on. He, he you know, he's not even talking about football next year. He's not talking about track this spring. He's a guy that's really single-minded as his focus, and he goes after. It. And then when that's done, he takes the next task and gets after. It. Comes from a great family. Like again, he's not from Ohio, but right. Richmond's kind of about as local kind, as you can get. Right there, kind of pretty close. Besides our Talawanda <laughs> boys, exactly. You know, exactly. We really went local, but I mean, so he's it's awesome. His family's really going to be able to be a big part of his college career at Miami, and he's he's a special special kid. Yeah, talk about two sport athletes. This is a three sport athlete and excels in each and every one of them. And that is the defensive linemen that have signed. Uh, their national letters of intent to attend Miami University here today on National Signing Day. Uh, Coach, I do want to talk about, you know, we're, we're here in Coach Martin's office uh, at Yeager Stadium and the, the outer office. Uh, you know, you, you've seen some of the video of what has been done here. Now, that's one of the things that has changed over the last year. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the uh, indoor practice facility, the uh, indoor sports center in just a bit. But uh, you've redone the office here at uh, Yeager Stadium. Yeah, if you've seen the show Extreme Makeover, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we, we didn't have them come in, but you would have thought we had them come yeah. in. So uh, the support, we talk about you can't do it by yourself. You need the right. support. And obviously our, our office space was excellent, but was like a lot of our other football facilities was really antiquated. Yeah. Like we had, I saw some things I hadn't seen since I left my basement at 515 Blair Street, the, <laughs> the, the wall. So uh, they really have changed the whole professionalism aspect. When you walk in, you say, wow, this is first class. And then really grabbing our tradition. And in the one right. room, you have all our NFL players and the, the shot of Big Ben and, and Brooksy and all the guys that are playing. And then you got the cradle of coaches right behind us, which we're seeing right now in the video. And, and the shots I got these coaches, are just awesome because oh, yeah. I like I said, I've never seen a shot of Bo without the Michigan thing on and the in the glasses mm -hmm. and the where well, we got we got to show Ben Shep Shembeck was playing football at Miami like Absolutely. in a three-point stance and and Eric Parsegian running the ball at Miami so what an incredible nostalgic tradition room that my office is and then the outer office and then obviously we did some for our players it's this is what this is about right it's about these kids and creating incredible experience for these players and in uh, uh, David Sale Mark Roundtree took the time and effort to give us the funds to put in a player lounge, which we haven't had here, to our players can right. go in there and have a place that's all their own and relax and play whatever the PS4. The, you know, it's been a great place for, for my son, and he likes to come and play. <laughs> he always says, I want to come to practice, then he spends five minutes that's at practice, fine. and then he disappears, and I'm like, do you want to go to practice? You just like the player's lounge. Well, I think he just likes the player lounge. Absolutely, and you're there, and you're seeing video again of Coach Martin's office, and uh, uh, just an outstanding job uh, as it really brings home the tradition of Miami right. football, but also touches what, what is going on here now yeah, in the program. And helps us, helps us in recruiting, because you can talk about the cradle of coaches, and now we have an incredible visual, and then you talk about all the guys that have played in the NFL and they got this incredible visual and then all the other walls um, obviously 
Fathead did an incredible job for us mm -hmm. of making it. We got the crowd out in the outer office. We right. got us coming out of the tunnel in this office, and it's 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 a pretty awesome. When people come in here, it's a wow factor. It and, really is. And yeah. uh, so it's it's been a huge upgrade for us in the short term, and obviously we're going to have a bigger upgrade in the near near future when we get in our own football building. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, we'll still come over here and visit, though. Well, that's just the the first of many changes that we're going to talk about here a little bit later on. We'll uh, give you a sneak peek of the new indoor uh, sports center that is just about completed uh, in the north uh, end of the uh, Jaeger Stadium complex. But up next, we're going to talk about how that indoor sports center got to be and all of the other changes that are going on, not only with football, with Miami athletics in general. As up next, the director of athletics for Miami University, David Saylor, will join us as we continue here with more of our National Signing Day special on Miami All Access. Stay tuned. And we welcome you back into our National Signing Day special here at Miami University in the offices of head coach Chuck Martin. Steve Baker joined by the director of athletics for Miami University. David Saylor joins us. And uh, David, just a, a big day uh, everywhere for college football. But uh, I know, uh, you know, just looking at our signees and, and what's uh, been accomplished uh, by this coaching staff, uh, just a huge day for this program as it continues to get rebuilt. The foundation that Chuck is laying with his staff, with this class in particular, their first full year, kind of getting after it and really working. I, I couldn't be more impressed with their work ethic, um, their drive, and also just the level of kind of, they knew they had this under control. Today mm -hmm. wasn't a big surprise for us. We knew these kids were committed. We knew they were bought into what Chuck was, was offering. Yeah. And um, they're going to have no surprises when they get here. And that's what I love about Chuck's staff and the way they approach recruiting. Yeah, obviously, uh, just a little over a year ago, we hired Chuck Martin. And, and, it, and it's been a whirlwind, even you know, after the season uh, this year and, and getting things done. So much has been accomplished in just a little uh, over a year. Really, uh, when you take a look at, you know, we talked about the changes in the offices, the indoor facility, so much has changed to help this program over the last year. Yeah, and football is such a unique sport because it really takes a mountain to move, right? Really? I mean, you, yeah. we've got the whole campus supporting football in Miami, and that's from the Board of Trustees to the President's Office all the way down. And to have that happen and Chuck to be able to kind of help bring all that together with, with me, it's just been phenomenal to watch. And it's what's really going to move the needle here quicker than it normally would in a football program. Yeah, it, it was interesting. Uh, you know, Coach Martin and I were, were down in the indoor 
uh, the center and the sports center uh, doing our little sneak preview that folks will see here in just a little bit. But it was less than a year ago that you and, and Coach Martin, John Harbaugh, and uh, President Hodge were all standing down there breaking ground on this facility. And here we are just about a week away from opening this. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, and it was brought to light to me because we just signed a, a naming gift for the indoor that we're going to announce in the next few weeks. So everyone can stay tuned to that. There you go. But um, I was delivering a shovel to that person who was going to name the facility, and I looked at the sticker on the shovel, and it talked about April, April, yeah, of 2014. And they actually didn't pour footers and stuff until July. Right. So that building has really been built in six months, and it's been done because Steve Cady has, has worked his tail off mm -hmm. to stay on the contractor. Turner Construction has done a great job to open that building as quickly as we have. You know, is, is really a testament to a lot of hard work, but I wanted it done because I didn't want our student athletes to miss another winter. Right. Right. Yeah. If the building's done in April, what good does that do us exactly. kind of right away? So I appreciate everyone's hard work. It's really been a group effort, and I'm excited that some kids are going to be in there this weekend using it. Yeah, actually, it, it's, it's more than just football, and you'll, you'll understand that when you get the tour, but almost all of our sports will be able to work out in it, and baseball gets the honor of being the first team to work out in there. Yes, they do, and that's actually appropriate because yeah. a lot of baseball donors stepped up uh, to help build the building, and football donors were a, a large chunk as well. Those two sports are really the leaders in terms of donations from alumni. Let's talk about the donors and donations. You have obviously throughout your career been very, very successful in fundraising, and, and, and you and I talked about this, I think, on Hawk Talk uh, during the football season. I mean, you're, you're out there fundraising for a football program that literally is 2-26. and 26. Your philosophy, and, and obviously we talk about the cell that is Miami and their history, but your philosophy, you have been just so successful in going out there and getting funds. Uh, talk about that. Well, I think the biggest key for me is I don't live life in the present or the future. I mean, right. in the past or the future. I live in the present. Right. And in the present, I know what we need to get accomplished, and I think we're able to communicate that to donors, and they understand it. Right, it makes mm -hmm. sense, and so we're going to push really hard about what we need to do, and we know that if we do all these things and we check all the boxes and do all the hard work that the staff needs to do, we're going to have a winning program here. And so that's how you sell it. It's more of an aggressive approach. I'm very direct mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with donors and with alums. Um, I, I'm very much like Chuck in that sense. When I met Chuck, we had, a, I think, a connection in the way we deal with people, mm -hmm. uh, the way we think about things. So I think that I've just taken similar approach that he uses in recruiting. I take that to fundraising, and you just keep playing. And that's all you can do. Well, and, and obviously have been very, very successful here. Uh, uh, the uh, the hockey facility is done. The indoor is just about done. Uh, baseball is being worked on with their legacy project and the locker room facility and uh, about ready to announce another, uh, the APC, uh, you know, and when that will get done. And uh, also a campaign just around the corner. And uh, again, a largely successful before it ever starts. Yeah, and with any campaign, you want to get to about more than half of the money kind of raised before you announce and we're, mm -hmm. we're going to be upwards of $45 million here pretty soon and, and probably announce this spring a campaign of $80 million is, is the goal to announce. And mm -hmm. we're just working on the date right now. Right. But uh, it's certainly an exciting time for us with a lot of people contributing and a lot of people getting involved. And, and I can't think of a better time over this campaign. It's got something for everybody. It's got right. something for every sport. It's going to help every student athlete. There's scholarship component to it. There's a facility component to it, which we're well on our way right. to achieving. But, but there's so many things for donors to jump on board that this is really going to be a critical time but at the same time, a real exciting time for what we're doing. Well, and that's that's what I, I tell everybody that I run into. I, you know, the, how are things going? They always ask. And I say it's a great time to be a Red Hawk, and they, they look at the records and say, "Well, I don't get that." Well, if you are associated with the program at all and, and see what is going on inside this program and what is being planned and what is being worked on, the buy-in from the coaches and the players and everyone involved, it, it's a great time to be a Red Hawk. It is. You get impatient. Um, oh yeah. You want it all to happen so fast. And my wife and I, we don't talk a lot when we lose so unfortunately we've had a lot of times where we haven't been talking as much in the last couple of years but you know the, the point she understands the process and, and I do too we got to give our coaches and our student athletes the best facilities possible mm -hmm. uh, to, to participate and, and, and succeed and once we get those in place I the future is so bright and I can't wait to fast forward a year oh, yeah. to see these kids that Chuck's talking about on the field I can't wait to see the basketball players you know taking you better usage of Millette and all the improvements we've had there so yeah. the indoor I've had so many student athletes come to my office and, and thank us for that and, and what it means to them. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what this job's really about. The wins and losses are going to come. Those things are going to you know, happen no matter what. But I know we're going to start winning. But to see the student athlete 
benefit and talk to me about how important that is to them. That, that's what that's why we do our job. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and we're talking about the facility changes and that sort of thing. But uh, also, uh, you mentioned the scholarship component of the uh, campaign coming up. People don't realize, and, and I'm just, well, maybe they do, but it, it just costs so much in the budget of the athletic department. You got to pay for those scholarships, and then that side of the donation picture uh, is a big bonus. No doubt, and and with the changes in college athletics today, oh, with absolutely. cost of attendance, there's a little yeah. bit more scholarship, but it's all for the betterment of student athlete welfare. Right. And at Miami, we are all about that. In fact, we've already been been you know doing things uh, for our kids with meal plans and housing that are much much to their benefit more than maybe we were supposed to do, but we always try to give the maximum scholarship stuff we can possibly give, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do the same thing with cost of attendance. But that does mean increased scholarship costs, right. and so that is the kind of stuff that we're out in the road talking to donors about and helping. We also have some new revenue streams from, from ESPN and from uh, the college football playoff, but I hate to use those for scholarships when you can be out raising money for scholarships, and so that's why I, I really talk to donors about making a difference in terms of their donation and, and doing scholarships are so critical for the future of this mm -hmm. program. That's you know that's one thing people talk about uh, these days with autonomy and you know the cost of a scholarship and that sort of stuff changing with that autonomy. Uh, uh, Miami and the Mid American Conference are are looking to stay right there. Yeah, we're fully committed to it. We've talked about it as a league, as a, as a group of ads. Uh, we're not only just the cost of attendance, but the four year scholarships, the concussion protocols. Right. We're on board with all those things and going to be participating just as every other division. Division one FBS football power five school is yeah. um, anything that does with student athlete welfare we're going to be right up there at the top supporting it well I tell you what I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the job that you're doing in, in getting these facilities built uh, it is a huge bonus for the kids that come to this school obviously Miami sells itself for the most part but the facilities getting up to the level where they need to be is a big bonus. well we have the plan yeah. and that's been a lot of hard work um, from my office but also from our development staff but I got to say that the trustees have just been unbelievable right. at, at giving us room to roam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people to go talk to, helping set things up. They've been hosting dinners for me. Mm -hmm. It's just been unbelievable the level of support that they've provided, mm -hmm. and and we couldn't have accomplished all these things without them. And the president's office, you know, Dr. Hodge, Dave, Dr. Kramer, has just been unbelievable. So I. I really feel blessed that uh, we've got the support we need from above to go out and get the work done and, and make things happen. And I think we're seeing those results. And it's just, uh, it's really, it is. After you think about two years, it's been a little bit over two years, and the changes, when you actually start adding it up, it, it kind of starts to hit you. But I still think we're not going fast enough. Yeah, I understand. So there's well, more to do. There's a lot more to do. And uh, I'm sure in the coming months, we'll hear a lot more about what is being accomplished. We appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy. <laughs> thanks, Bake, and thanks for all you're doing. Mm, thank appreciate you. it. David Saylor, Director of Athletics for Miami University, joining us here. We'll come back, talk more about signees. We'll give you a tour of that indoor uh, practice facility here in just a bit as well. Head coach Chuck Martin will rejoin us when we continue with more of our National Signing Day special on Miami All Access after this. You're watching the 2015 Miami Red Hawk Football NLI Signing Day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. You're watching the 2015 Miami Red Hawk Football NLI Signing Day Special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank.
Welcome back in. It's our National Signing Day special, Miami Red Hawk football here in 2015. A great signing class. We'll tell you more about some of the athletes in just a moment. Steve Baker along with you and head coach Chuck Martin rejoins us uh, inside his offices here at Yeager Stadium. And coach, uh, just talking with David Saylor, obviously uh, his relationship with the donors is huge, but relationship uh, that you have built with David and, and, and what the two of you have accomplished with everybody else has been just spectacular. Yeah, he's kind of spoiling me. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking Jerry Jones retract, retractable stadium. Here oh, there you go. There you so go. So just the amount of, of work he's done with our donors and, and sharing his vision with them that we really can have the best of everything here and be a major player in, in, in football and all other sports. And then obviously his relationship with the people on campus, with President Hodge and the support we've gotten from President Hodge. And then obviously... Uh, Dr. Kramer, right. who, who handles all the <laughs> financial all decisions the dollars, for, yeah. and, and his relationship with him is probably the most important relationship he has because they're working side by side, hand in hand to, to make all the dollars work. And obviously these projects take millions of dollars right. and there's financing and there's, you know, you get gifts, but you don't always get the money up front and the support he's gotten. Uh, um, from from Dr. Kramer has been unbelievable, which has allowed him just to keep moving forward and keep, you know, we've got a, one building built and another one on the way. So it it takes a lot of work to run a company. And we, we've got a great company going here in Miami. We're, yeah. we're all supporting one another and we're all doing our jobs. And, and that's that's why you're this tremendous change in a very short period of time. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's been an amazing couple of years here. Uh, we are taking your questions as you watch here this afternoon. You can tweet a question to us at Miami Red Hawks, and we'd be happy to ask Coach Martin about those uh, uh, about your question. And we've got a couple of them here. Bruce Weingart asks, "What impact do you feel that the new indoor facility had on your ability to cr to recruit this year's class?" Obviously, it's huge. The day and age we live in is is kids love uniforms, kids love facilities, even parents love uniforms and facilities. Yeah. And uh, uh, talking about the new indoor, obviously, it wasn't done. We just we were just in it for the first time. We had a junior day, and we had 75 kids actually walk into it just barely yeah. and walk back out. But the idea that we're going to have an indoor facility and a state of the art indoor facility, and uh, mm -hmm. certainly is what people want here. Oregon has set the trend. Uh, with their Nike Palace that they have there, and then yeah. you have the Cowboys and what Jerry Jones has created, and right. uh, there's a reason free agents are going to go to Dallas, you know, right. because of the facilities that they get. So it's it's been huge, and then we sell a lot on the development of players. So it's mm -hmm. not just seeing that visual and having that cool building, but it's right. also a big part of our shtick is that we're going to develop you more than the next guy's going to develop you. But now that creates a unique opportunity to develop you because we've got a state and art facility that the December, January, February, March months that aren't very nice, you can go get really high quality work done. So right. it goes hand in hand with recruiting and the development of these kids. Chuck Walker asks, uh, what, per, per, what percentage of this class, excuse me, do you think will contribute in 2015? Uh, that's a good question. I would just throw out a number, which I don't really even worry about that or think right. about that because we just kind of let them play. But I would, I would say, say there's 25 roughly in the class. I'd say 25 to 30 percent will probably contribute next year. We'd still like to redshirt kids if we can, but um, it may be even a little higher than that. I don't know. But I'd say roughly a fourth of the class will probably contribute right away. Very good. Uh, Mason Banbury asks, how quick will uh, the defensive players, do you think, learn the defense for Miami University? Uh, as hopefully, they're coming ho in? hopefully very quickly. Very quickly? So, <laughs> so we have good teachers over there, and uh, we uh, – we, we tend to force feed it pretty good. We don't really give an option, but that's all part of the adjustment. Different scheme in high school and in different level of time. They don't have spring ball. They don't have all the meeting time in high school we have. So uh, some kids do take a little longer to learn, and that may dictate that they don't play right away, which is fine. They get a redshirt year and keep moving forward. But uh, we hopefully that they can understand at least part of the schemes uh, to get involved right away. And then particularly on the defense side, boy, in the D-line, you might have a guy that's a first and second down guy and only really has to learn our first and second down schemes. Right. Maybe another guy's more of a third round down pass rush guy and he just has to learn just what we're doing on third, third down. down. So sometimes you can, you know, like the middle relief pitcher, like the short relief pitcher, you can create specific jobs that they don't have to learn the whole package, but they can still help our football team. Very good. Again, if you have questions you would like to ask Coach Martin, you can, again, tweet those to us at Miami Redhawks, and we'd be happy to pass those along to you. And let's move on here now as we talk about uh, defensive skill positions that uh, has signed their national letter of intent uh, to play at Miami University here uh, this afternoon. We've got six players on that. 
that list. And uh, we will begin in Michigan, East Grand Rapids, Michigan, and East Grand Rapids High School, 6'2", 225-pound linebacker, Carter Masick. Tell us about Carter. Yeah, Carter, another tremendous student from a tremendous high school. Uh, East Grand Rapids not only academically is as good as it gets, uh, but also football. Coach Sturzma, who's this is right in my backyard for 10 years. I've got a right. great relationship with Coach Sturzma, and uh, I don't know how many state championships they've won. He's probably lost count. I know I've lost <laughs> count. Nice thing about Carter, he gives us a lot of versatility at the linebacker position. He's big and strong, but he's athletic. Here you see him inside blitzing. He's a very good blitzer, but Coach Sturzma also used him out more of a nickel Sam outside backer, so he's actually played out in space, which a lot of kids that, that – played inside back that's the only thing they played in high school where Carter's done both and he's been really efficient at both he'll be a very good pass coverage guy he's got a great feel uh, for the football as he's got a great feel in coverage um, but also he has the ability to play inside if we need an inside guy he's got the ability to play outside and then he's also blitzed a bunch so those are those are unique qualities very versatile for an inside backer as you see him walking up on the edge and coming off the edge here and he's a run and hit guy, and he, he expects to win, and he expects to be a great student. That's kind of what East Grand Rapids <laughs> produce. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, you go play big-time football or you go to the best schools in the country. That's what they do. And uh, played in tons of big games. And, you know, East Grand Rapids, one of those schools that either win the state title is a bad year. So that's the burden, you know, and the pressure. So those are, those are the types of programs you love to get kids because they're all very used to the pressure of winning right. and the expectations are that you just win. Like, mm -hmm. there is no other expectation. Yep. So, very excited about Carter. And he's a Blackhawks fan. Absolutely. So. First <laughs> team all-conference as a senior. Uh, first team all-state by the Detroit News. He's also another one of those two uh, sport athletes as he lettered in basketball at East Grand Rapids High School as well. We head down south. Victory Christian High School, Charlotte, North Carolina. Six-foot, 192-pound DB, Joshua Allen. Yeah, J Josh is, is a tremendous athlete from a very, very, very good high school that plays very good football and extremely versatile. I don't, honestly, I'm so excited we're getting Josh. I can't exactly tell you where he could fit. I think he played corner, I think he played safety. He rushed for 411 yards and six touchdowns on 12 carries oh, wow. in a game. Yeah. So he averaged almost 40 yards a carry for a football game. He only played, I think, a half that night. But he, he can run the ball, he can catch the ball. He is long, athletic, as you see right there. I love that clip, that's mm -hmm. hard to do. Look like Quentin Rounds a little bit right there. But he can play, he's going to be big enough to be a safety. He's athletic enough. But we, and he could play receiver on offense. He's got mm -hmm. great ball skills. So he's, he's the kid you love to recruit because he's going to give you versatility. And those are the kids that play the quickest because you just put them in the shortest line. You let them go play and they win a spot. So mm -hmm. uh, dad's a coach. Dad's a basketball coach. He's grown up. He's very well trained. Um, another unique story. It's first time in my life. He comes on official visit and he's a qualifier right now. But he retook his ACT. Mm -hmm. per his dad, not per us, in Hamilton on official visit. Like, uh. That's the type of academic family that they are. That's how important academics are. And mm -hmm. uh, as you see him running the ball here, he's, he's, he's very, very exciting for a football coach because it's, it's, it's like having five pieces to the puzzle in one, and now mm -hmm. you can move him where you want to move him and give him an opportunity to play and, and win and compete and, and help you win games. And he'll be a return guy. and yeah. so. Multiple jobs guy for sure. Just great speed, a two-time first-team All-State honoree, combined for 3,592 yards and 47 touchdowns as a junior and senior. Uh, just an outstanding recruit for the Miami Redhawks. Glad to see him on board. We'll, we'll get into the old, you got a lot of tailbacks here, you know. Yeah. Then, <laughs> which is always, you know, I've, I've had that for years. Like, it took seven tailbacks, and I'm like, did you ever go to a high school football game? <laughs> Did you put your best player best at wide out? Did you put your best player at corner? Did you put your best player at safety? Did you put your best player at running back? Yeah. And we're trying to recruit all these teams' best players. And if they, so a lot of a lot of times these high school guys that are stud special mm -hmm. special athletes play tailback, and then they end up playing all sorts of different things for people in college. So yeah. we do always take a lot of tailbacks. It's by design. Randallstown, Maryland, St. Paul's High School, six foot, one hundred and eighty-five pound DB, Alan Koi Koi. Tell us about Alan. Allen, back-to-back state champions, uh, winning program, tremendous school. Actually goes to school with Coach John Harbaugh's daughter. Oh, yeah? Actually, they do a lot of community service in his school. You can see him run here, incredible stride here. Uh, actually, I think Coach, Coach Harbaugh's daughter, a little bit like he was assistant coach in her basketball, so small, small world sometimes. Uh -huh. Late blooming kid, late blooming kid. Didn't, didn't start most of his junior year. Uh, has grown tremendously. He's got taller. He's got a lot heavier. He's kind of the skinny kid that hadn't really figured this thing out. 
And uh, obviously, if you don't start as a junior, you're not going to get recruited at all. And I, we watch his tape. Our defensive staff did a great job. And they brought me this guy's tape during the season. I'm like, okay, bad grades, no. Okay, horrible person, no. Like, what am I missing? Because this kid, they're like, no, he just didn't play. I go, okay, he didn't play last year that much. So everyone's done recruiting. And now Allen's still out there. And I love his ball skills. I love his length. I love his speed. He's, he's to me what corners need. I said, if I have 10 guys in my defense that look like him on the back end, we're going to have a really good back end. Absolutely. And uh, again, he was selected as a, a Baltimore Touchdown Club Super 22 team selection. Also selected to play in the Crab Bowl All-Star Game and uh, won back-to-back -back state championships and appeared in three straight title games at St. Paul's High School in uh, Randallstown, Maryland. Again, that's Alan Koikoi. As you see, just great speed down the sideline. And uh, uh, that's another element of all these DBs and linebackers that uh, we're seeing uh, on the skill side. Just great speed by these yeah. guys. His stride length. And he's, he's longer. He's a six-foot corner. Mm -hmm. But he's got short torso, long legs. Long legs, know, great which, length. Yep. As we talked about when Max was born, my son. Long torso, short, short legs. Short legs. Never yeah, yeah, that's it was a buzz kill right away, right <laughs> off the bat. Like, ah, three seconds in, we're doomed. <laughs> you know, my wife looks at me like, you know, was that a good thing? I'm like, nah. No, no, nah, 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 not no probably. So, you even see when he's running the end zone on that 100 yard punt return, yeah. he's jogging at the end because he's out and he's still going two strides two for strides. five yards, which yeah. that's what the really fast kids do. And he's, he's got it shut down and he's still eating up all that real estate. And that just, you cover so much more ground in the field when you have that stride length. So, very good. Pretty impressive young man. Well, let's go back up to Michigan. Oak Park, Michigan is the home of 6'2", 225-pound linebacker Junior McMullen. Tell us about Junior. Yeah, Junior's actually a line. We got our, we got our list a little jumbled up, but that's no one's fault because Junior was a yeah. late, late add. Uh, we just got his NLI at 1045. You talk about the recruiting process, his everything you try to do in recruiting completely backwards. <laughs> Junior's a very, very physical kid, as you're going to see right here. He is big. He's already 225 pounds. He can run. He can hit. He plays for Coach Carter, who anyone that knows Michigan football knows uh, Coach Carter, legendary coach at DePoris, and then DePoris shuts down. He goes to Angster High School, who has a hard time winning a game. Within three years, Coach Carter's got him in a state championship game. Then he comes to Oak Park and basically has done the same turn on. He's, mm -hmm. he's a Hall of Famer, a kind of a living legend in the state of Michigan. And this kid has, has been with him for two years and has really blossomed him. And uh, truly, truly, I believe, a BCS linebacker. He is a big, physical, all the attributes, and, and has a huge upside. Really was committed to another school in our league before we even got in on the recruiting process. We just got here. We didn't even start on junior, so we were way mm -hmm. behind. We tried to dabble with him. We got nothing. We kind of shut down. Coach Welsh's credit uh, kind of tried to stay in contact with them, but we mm -hmm. really still had nothing. We were recruiting all these kids for a whole year, right. and we've had kids committed since last March, last April, last June, and basically he was, we knew about him. We were disappointed we were going to have to play against him because uh -huh. we heard he was a great kid. We knew he was a great player, and then a week ago, another school in our league kind of got a visit from the kid, and now all of a sudden the, the door was open, and Coach Wells literally uh, a week ago Monday, the last week before the signing day, went into the high school, talked to Coach Carter, talked to Junior about, hey, you just took another trip. Are you still open? We've never really recruited you. Mm -hmm. So on Wednesday, Coach Welsh somehow got the kid to con convince him to come visit. And he's here this weekend. And his recruiting cycle in Miami literally was seven days. Uh -huh. We bust our butt wow. for 12 months on kids and you don't get them. And really from start to finish, uh, we got him. And then once you get him to Miami and he finds out about us and what we've done mm -hmm. as coaches, and then he finds out about the school and he meets – the academic people and he had a wonderful visit and and we won the battle against a cup we were either going to play against him or he's going to play with us and he's a tremendous talent to get late and uh he he could be a mainstay in our defense for years to come physically he's going to be able to compete the day he walks in the door and um so great job by coach Wells and great job by israel wolfolk who's one of our graduate assistants who played for me at grand valley but he also uh grew up close to where junior grew up and mm -hmm. kind of coach welsh and coach izzy Made up for 12 months and seven days. Go get it done, Between yeah. The, kind of on his visit, Izzy took him around and stayed with him, and um, there was a lot of close contacts there. They worked out with the same guy, the same mm -hmm. guy that trained Izzy, same guy that trained Junior. So uh, we, we had a good plan, and, and somehow we kind of pulled a rabbit out of the hat late, and we're, we're tremendously excited to get. Anytime you get a player from Coach Carter's program, 
he's going to know how to do things the right way. Yeah. Because Coach Carter doesn't mess around with anything. And then get a kid this talented, this late, and credit to, to Izzy and credit to Coach Walsh, who really, really somehow, uh, I'm going to give him a big hug when we get down. To there you go. Time. It is the definition of a good get uh, there in Junior McMullen. We head down south, Hampton, Georgia, Dutch, Dutchtown High School, 6'2", 197-pound DB, DeAndre Montgomery. Yeah, we love we love the state of Georgia. I, I recruited when I was at Notre Dame, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna recruit. That's gonna be our second area is Georgia. And then we get kids from all over, as you can tell by our center. Sure. But long, athletic, late bloomer again. He's another kid that if if he was one more year ahead in the progression of his talents, he'd probably be too good for this level. But he really kind of had a breakout senior. He'll run and hit. He puts his face in. He takes great angles to the ball. This is what he does. A really good job of sifting his way through and finding the football and, and really putting his face on people. Then he's done a nice job playing the ball. Another long strider, as you can see, he eats up a lot of ground and he's going to get, he is a fast kid, but he's, Coach Hark's going to take this guy and he's going to run a completely different speed when he leaves Miami because he has, he has some burst inside of him. He's still getting that strength, but this is what we love about him, that he's going to put his face on people. Reminds me a little bit of Tony Reed, the kid we have last year that yep. mm -hmm. makes his presence felt on the football field. We need more run and hit guys, and he's definitely a run and hit guy. Selected uh, to the DLC, DLSC All-Star Bowl, also first team All-Region, led his team in interceptions and second in tackles. He was also selected to play in the offense versus defense All-Star game and named the team's defensive most valuable player. Again, 6'2", uh, 197 pounder from Hampton, Georgia, DeAndre Montgomery, again showing the speed and the physicality that I know that you are looking for on this team. Yeah, and we, he's one of, we got a couple kids out of Georgia this year, and we're going to continue get more kids out of Georgia. It's not very far away. It's very drivable as opposed to going further. Uh, great family, very, very close family. It was very fun to sit in their living room, see how close-knit mom, dad, big brother, younger brother, sisters, and the whole deal. So it was, it was an awesome, awesome family unit. We're very happy to have DeAndre, and it's at a position of high need. We were thin in the secondary. I told them this morning we committed, like, get to work because we're going to need you yeah. almost right away. Very good. Well, from one of the largest trips or longest trips, I guess, down to Georgia to one of the uh, most uh, shortest trips or the shortest trips that you would have to make recruiting from right here in Oxford, Tatawanda High School, six foot 185-pound DB, McKenzie Thomas. Yeah, very excited about McKenzie. Um, mom and dad are big wigs at Miami. Uh -huh. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, they know plenty of things about Miami and are privy to information that I don't get <laughs> privy to. So they're higher up on the food chain than I am. But a uh, great kid. It's awesome. You, you get a kid from Talawanda High School, and we actually got two. We'll talk about the other one a little sure. bit. But uh, And then at a position of need at safety. And not only at your local in-town school in Oxford, but also it's Coach JD's a Miami alum and, yeah. and a Miami guy. So it's it's, it's going to be awesome. It's awesome for these kids because they're going to play right in their hometown. And they talk about growing up watching Travis Prentice. Now they're playing on the same field that Travis Prentice playing. So pretty cool for them. But yeah. awesome and a great kid from great family, great students. All early <laughs> early admits um, or whatever. The, I don't know the process, but they mm -hmm. got in the first first cut, which is hard to do at Miami and. Uh, uh, really looking forward to coaching him, and, and again, we don't have a ton of depth in our secondary, so he's going to have an opportunity to come in and kind of strut his stuff right away. Had 50 career solo tackles at the cornerback position, also a two-way starter as both a junior and senior for the Braves at Talawanda High School, and uh, in addition to uh, playing some great football, earned academic all-conference honors in 2012 and 2014. Mackenzie Thomas from right here in Oxford at Talawanda High School, and those are the defensive skill signees in uh, this 2015 National Letter of Intent Signing Day class. We still have the offensive skill to get to a little bit later on. And uh, you've heard uh, Coach and I talk about it. David Saylor and I talk about it. The Indoor Sports Center is just about complete on the north end of uh, Jaeger Stadium. And uh, we had a chance to go down and uh, take a look at it uh, yesterday. I, actually, it was my first time inside the building uh, uh, as uh, we took uh, a little sneak peek of it. And uh, we're going to show that to our fans here in just a bit. But uh, outstanding facility. And again, we talk about the speed with which it was done and that sort of thing. Uh, just it, as it had to be just a huge recruiting tool for you. Yeah, and it, it has. We walk in there and you say, wow. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I've been in a lot of indoor facilities that don't look anything as close to as nice as the one that we've got a nice indoor palace is what we're calling it. And, yeah. Uh, incredible, incredible facility. We're so excited to get in there. We're going to be in there start next week with our with our current guys, and then mm -hmm. obviously, like we've talked from recruiting, obviously it's a huge sell. But it also 
is something you're not going to see on our campus, something this right. nice. They're going to maybe go on other indoors that are half half the field or part of the field. It's full 120 yards, which there's there's a 100-meter strip of track and all that, but it's, 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 it's a football paradise really is what it is. Yeah, We'll come back, and you will see our sneak preview of the Miami Indoor Sports Center when we come back. Our National Letter of Intent Signing Day special continues on Miami All Access after this. We're here outside the Indoor Sports Center with head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, we've talked several times about watching this thing come to fruition. It's just about there. What do you think? Yeah, no, we're, we're awfully excited. We can't wait. They're still finishing up some work. So this is going to be our first sneak preview. We haven't even had a chance to move into this yet. So this is pretty exciting. Well, let's go in and take a look and uh, show everybody what it's all about. Coach, just about a year ago, you and I, David Saylor, John Harbaugh, were standing just about in the same spot. You guys were putting shovel in dirt, getting ready to build this spectacular building. It's been an exciting 11 months. Yeah, and it's, it's gone very quickly. It's always when you talk about uh, building buildings, you never know how quickly they're gonna get done, but they, they have done a great job and uh, turned this into really a football palace for us uh, for not only the short term, but for the long term of Miami football. How does that get done this quick? I mean, we, you've, you've seen buildings go up, but literally in less than a year, you go from putting a shovel in the dirt to opening this building in just a week or two. Yeah, and the amazing thing is really two years ago today, they hired David Saylor as the athletic director, and he gets on a mission that he's going to raise money for, for all the sports at Miami, but particularly football, and raises over $15 million for this building within nine months, and the board of trustees approves it, and uh, the architect or architect gets the plans and all that, and next thing you know, uh, in a very short period of time, uh, you've got one of the nicest, if not the nicest, indoor facility in the country. Yeah, you know, the donors have done so much uh, in getting this ready. I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about them, but really, David Saylor's efforts, when you take a look at what has been accomplished in the first couple of years of his reign, has been spectacular. Yeah, and it's 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 doesn't happen without David Saylor's been working his tail off, but it doesn't happen without. Um, some very, very successful people that are also very generous and also really, really love Miami and love Miami football. So he's went out and, and raised a lot of money in a short period of time. We certainly want to thank those donors uh, that have really, really, really stepped up for, for Miami football and, and put in uh, a lot of money to make this thing happen because raising $15 million isn't easy and there's some big time donors that stepped up to help us. Well, let's take a look around and uh, visit some of the facility here. You know, we were just talking about donors and, and looking down over the field. We're here on the uh, camera platform on the south end of the new uh, indoor sports facility. And there's a lot of donors involved, but you look down on the field, Coach, Ben Roethlisberger Field has to mean a lot to this program. Yeah, and, and like we've talked in the past, Bake, it's, it's amazing uh, the amount of money he gave us uh, to support this, this project, but also having his name on the field and having him tied to our football program forever and getting heavily involved in our football program is exactly what we wanted when we got here and and uh, it's it means a lot for recruiting it just means a lot when your most recognizable player that has ever played in your university and he's going to be a future hall of famer in the nfl uh, his name's on the field and it's it's, it's pretty awesome and then just sitting up here first thing i had to say is like wow yeah. you know what i mean like I, i've never been up here and the view up here 
I almost wish I could coach from up here because the, the view is incredible and, and the building looks great from down there, but it looks a thousand times better from up here. It's really, really an amazing facility. Gives you a great vantage point of practice. We were talking on the way up here. I, I think I'll be living on this platform yeah. uh, just watching practice. You know, it's, it, we talk about the donors and really the change of the program starts with those people getting involved. I know that you and David both have really gotten a lot of former players involved and a lot of other people re-involved in the program. Right, and, and facilities are the key and, and we couldn't do this without their generosity. And recruiting nowadays, a lot of it, the first thing I want to know is what your facility's like. Before they've even been on your campus, you're talking to them on the phone and all the high school kids and even the high school parents like, hey, what kind of facilities you have? And you say, well, we're getting ready to open a $15 million indoor. Mm -hmm. And then obviously once we get them here and they can see uh, this incredible building, that's just going to help us get get in on a much higher work caliber athlete than we've ever been able to recruit at Miami. You know, as, as our viewers get a chance to look around the building, what, the first thing I noticed, and we talked about it on the way down here, was how bright this facility is. When, when you take a look at all the white and the lights reflecting off that white, really makes it a, a bright facility in here for your team to practice. Yeah, in. I think that the color with the white walls and then the specific lighting, we have so much more money put into our lighting than mm -hmm. just about any other indoor I've been in. Then also the windows where most in, indoor facilities facilities are like an old airport hangar right. and there's not really any windows or any lights so we actually get some natural light coming from the outside and we've got a great vantage. We're actually sitting on our, our south film tower so this is where we'll film our, our wide copy of all our practices from up here so you, you sit up here and you see the view and uh, it, it is pretty amazing. It's such a huge facility but I think it even looks bigger because of of uh, the white walls and the, and the incredible lighting that we have. And as they show you the lighting, there's just way more lights here than any indoor I've ever been in. Well, you've got another uh, camera tower that we're going to check out. It is in the west end of the indoor sports center. Let's just head over there and take a look. Sounds good. Here we are in the west tower of the new indoor sports center. And uh, Coach, uh, need to remind everybody, we're giving everybody a sneak preview of the building. It hadn't even been opened yet. As you can tell, they're still working in here. and. Uh, just what an amazing view down the football field in this part of the building. Yeah, and it, obviously they set it up with everything in mind. Um, obviously a big part of our development of our kids is our practice right. and the filming of the practice and then going in and teaching off that film. And uh, I've been a lot of indoors that don't have the vantage point because the, the ceilings weren't as high, so we were a lot lower and the film wasn't good. We've got an end zone where we can shoot our end zone copies. We've been in the other tower, we can shoot the wide copies. And obviously we're gonna get incredibly look if a, if the guy's hands is six inches away from where he should be, <laughs> uh, we're gonna be able to get that. If his stances is exactly right, we're gonna be able to get this. So this is, they've done everything here. We kind of looked at all the best ones in the country and we took the best parts of the best ones and they turned it into the one we have at Miami. So it's pretty incredible. You know, it, we, we've talked a, a lot about it, some different things in here, but we're National Letter of Intent signing day. What does this building and Ben Roethlisberger and the whole package mean to your recruiting? Well, it just, it's, it's completely different deal uh, when, you, when you have facilities. And we have an incredible campus here at Miami. We got the best student center. We got the best business building. We got the best of everything on this right. campus. But we had kind of fallen behind the times uh, with our football facilities. And, uh, our facilities were nice when they were built, but they were a little antiquated, a little bit old. And then bringing this building into the fold, obviously, is a huge step and then with our next building we're coming with the with the football building that's going to attach right to this building basically when we walked in today we're standing right in the middle where the next building. building's going to be yeah. and we're going to go from probably the bottom end of Division One, as far as football facilities to the top end of Division One, all in about a 24 month period. Well, I know Kyle Cron's standing off to the side here, your video coordinator, and he's loving this camera angle and the fact with the new building, there's going to be even more technology and this is really going to be totally up to date, a great facility. For yeah, you. and the new building, new locker room for our players, state of the art locker room, state of the art weight room, and the nice thing, the weight room will be at the far end, there'll actually be a door right out the weight room into the indoor, oh, so you great. can warm kids up in the indoor, go right into the uh, weight room. On the other side is going to be locker room. Upstairs is going to be meeting rooms, offices. We're going to have training rooms, equipment rooms, rehab facilities. It's going to be a state-of-the-art facility. Well, this, uh, this building is not just for football. A lot of other sports uh, practice in here and develop in here. We're going to show you a little bit about that when we go back downstairs. Back down on turf level here at the Miami Indoor Sports Center. Steve Baker and Coach Martin. And, uh, you know, we talked upstairs that this is not just for football. A lot of other teams can practice. We're looking at a 120-yard tr indoor track uh, for sprint lanes. It's not even finished yet. They'll put paint on it this week and line it and that sort of thing. But not only track, that helps track, but also helps your team in conditioning as well. Yeah, we kind of got the best of both worlds. 
if you put a track around your football, uh, you can't have a 120 yard field. We, right. We're one of the few in the world that has a 120 yard field because there's no, we may be the only one that, but we still put the 100 meter track in. So for our track athletes, and then at the far end, there's a long jump pit, high jump pit, so they can do their jumps, they can do their sprint work. Then you got baseball and softball, they're as excited as we are exactly. to get in there because yeah. usually they're dealing with Midwest weather. The first time they actually can do some things out in space is down in Florida, wherever their March. spring trip is. Yeah. And now now they can come in here and there's batting cages gonna be up above and they can they can take infield, they can take outfield, pitchers can long toss. So it's, it's gonna be a pretty incredible uh, facility, soccer, lacrosse, there's, everybody's gonna be here at some point in time. Yeah, everybody's gonna be able to be in here. Just about every sport has an opportunity to practice in here, but also some of the students get involved in this as well as rec sports will also take possession of the game of, of the building for a period each day. Yeah, and, and rec sports will be in here and intramurals and all that. And there's just so many things. And then I just, as I've told President Hodge, it's limitless what you can do in here. I said, we're, we're, we're going to have other, for the band's going to end up being here. Right. And other, other groups on campus that need a big indoor place that in the winter, there is none of these. We have one right here. I've been where I could see Relay for Life being here at some exactly. point. And, and all these other functions outside of the athletic department that people are going to be dying to try to get in here and use our space, which is, that's why we built. Obviously, we built it for football, and it's a football facility. But uh, we're not going to be in it 24 hours a day. And when we're, when we're not in it, we're going to be awfully excited that everyone else is getting a ton of use and enjoying our facility. Well, I know David Saylor had the vision uh, and hired you. Uh, did you think you'd be in this building a year later after uh, you <laughs> dug dirt here? Yeah, no, he said we would. I, I, didn't, I didn't, definitely didn't take the job with the idea that we need an indoor within a year. I, I, took, I took the job thinking, hey, everybody says they're going to do this, that, and the other thing. I just met David Saylor. Seems like a stand-up guy, but I've been part of building before. So pretty amazing the fact that we're going to get the other building cleared through the board very quickly here in the right. upcoming months and hopefully break ground on that building this summer uh, is, is really incredible. The amount of support we're getting from our alums and the amount of love they have for our football program and want to get our football back to the championship level that has always has been for basically the last 60 years. Absolutely. Well, I, we hope that you've enjoyed a little sneak peek at the Indoor Sports Center here at Miami University. Obviously, keep watching for more footage and video when the team gets in here and practice. I know you're looking forward to spring ball. Yeah, hopefully the next thing we bring to you is a bunch of, bunch of guys running around with helmets and shoulder pads. That'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks for watching. Yep. We're here outside. You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk football NLI signing day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. You're watching the 2015 Miami Redhawk football NLI signing day special. Today's events are brought to you on Miami All Access, courtesy of Miami Savings Bank. Contact them at 513-523-7711. That's 513-523-7711 to learn more about the services of Miami Savings Bank. Welcome back in our National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special here at Miami University in the offices of Head Coach Chuck Martin at Yeager Stadium. A You're great watching class of new Red Hawks signing their National Letter of Intent today. We'll come back with uh, Coach Martin in just a bit and talk about uh, the remaining class that we haven't introduced you to. But wanted to take a moment, and we will over our final uh, part of, this, uh, of the show here, to talk to a, a couple of assistant coaches about putting this class together and how it works and uh, working for Coach Martin 
in, in getting this done. And happy to join, uh, happy to be joined here on the show by Eric Kaler, assistant coach. And Coach Kaler, you've known Coach Martin for a very, very long time. He recruited you, as, as a matter of fact. Well, it recruited me to, to work with him. And, yeah. Uh, back at Grand Valley back in the day, and uh, it's been a great experience here working mm -hmm. for Coach Martin again. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty settling at night when you go home knowing that uh, your boss is a guy you can trust and right, the right. guy's going to do things the right way and give our student athletes the very best chance to be successful. You know, in putting this class together, there's so much uh, that you go out there. And, you know, working for Miami University over the last year, obviously the university is a cell in and of itself with the academics and everything else. But pairing that with football, uh, you guys go out there and put it together. Yeah, I think uh, when Chuck hired our staff, one thing that most of us knew that uh, Chuck would always give us the best opportunity to get good players. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck's a dynamic recruiter. He's a, a guy that kids gravitate towards. He's uh, very likable. He's fun to be around. Uh, and the unique thing, though, we didn't know everything about when we got here was Miami. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew Chuck and we knew what we were uh, going to get as an opportunity to be with Coach Martin and how he would recruit and coach our players. But uh, we didn't know the product, the ins and outs of the product that we would have to sell when we went out recruiting. And I, I think that uh, as we've been here now for a year, the, the significant thing you find out that it's a powerful thing when you put Coach Martin and Miami together. Yeah. Uh, you have a product that is second to none academically, a place that's steeped in tradition. And when you put Chuck Martin with his track record of success at every level from mm -hmm. Division Three to the highest level of FBS, uh, you put those two things together, you have a power for force. And I think that you look at our class uh, right now, that that's probably a testament, one, to Coach Martin, but also the a testament to the combination of Coach Martin and Miami. Yeah, and, th and that's that's some of the, uh, maybe the recruiting process that people, you know, realize and, and, and don't think about often is, is, yeah, you want to go to a school like Miami, you want to be successful there, but you also want to play for a coach like Chuck Martin. Right, no doubt. I think uh, one of the things that's unique about us is that there's not very many places where you can go play FBS football at an institutional that's academically as well thought of as Miami. Right. And, uh, you know, with Coach Martin's background at really good schools, uh, he's been a great fit and he knows how to sell Miami and uh, how to convince a student athlete that this isn't just a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. So there's an academic component that Chuck really knows how to sell, but I think the the other part of this that's unique is that Coach Martin's had a, numerous players that have gone on and played after college, and uh, probably you know our staff has one. Obviously, Coach Martin when he is at Notre Dame, he had a lot of kids go and play at the NFL. But when you look at our staff uh, and our first time together here at a Division One school, uh, it's a unique opportunity that we can give kids the opportunity to go play at the next level, and Coach Martin knows how to do that. Talk about the staff, because obviously Coach Martin leads things and, and guides things, but uh, a lot of work put together by the staff, recruiting coordinators, in getting this class put together. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of credit goes out to Pat Welsh and John Hauser. They're our co-recruiting coordinators, and they work with Coach Martin on a daily basis in the logistics of recruiting. Um, but also our staff, I think that's uh, a unique staff that – there's a lot of guys that are connected to Coach Martin and know Coach Martin's background, but there's also guys like Joe Palsic who's connected to Miami that knows right. Miami. So you take a guy like George Barnett that knows Coach Martin since he was a player, right. you know, and then you take Joe Palsic that's known Coach Martin but also knows the ins and outs of Miami. We have a unique combination of people on our staff that can sell Miami and, and also know that – advantages and how fun it is to play for Coach Martin. Well, it, it, it's a great class, and, and you guys are to be co commended. And I, I know, as, as Coach Martin says, it takes a village to, to, to get a, you know, a kid here and through school and be successful. Uh, it takes a lot of teamwork on behalf of the coaching staff to get that done and get them here. No doubt. I think getting them here is the first step in the process. Right. And then when you get them here, you want to have great support and great teachers, which our staff I feel like we have a great staff of teachers first mm -hmm. and mentors for kids. But also, if you look at the experience that our student athletes have here from the academic component and the social component, uh, Coach Martin and the people that were here when we got here have put together a, an awesome deal so kids can thrive uh, in every aspect of their college experience when they get here. Well, great job on this class. Uh, congratulations. Appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. Eric Kaler joining us, Miami assistant coach. We'll come back and head coach Chuck Martin will rejoin us. We'll go over the offensive skill positions that uh, signed their national letter of intent as we continue with our National Signing Day special here on Miami All Access. More in just a moment.
And welcome back in. Our National Signing Day special here at Miami University continues from the head uh, coach office here at uh, Miami, uh, head coach Chuck Martin's office at Yeager Stadium. I'm Steve Baker, rejoined by the head coach. Uh, coach Martin joins us as we continue to talk about the recruiting class uh, here at Miami University and the uh, athletes that signed their national letter of intent. Do have another question from uh, one of our viewers out there that tweeted their question to at Miami Red Hawks. If you have a question, feel free to tweet your question to us and we'll uh, pass Pass it along. Jim Samaki asks, uh, do you prioritize recruiting efforts based on need or bringing in the best talent possible regardless of position? Um, just goes year to year. Sometimes if you have a smaller senior class and you have left scholarships, you really got to prioritize based on need. Mm -hmm. uh, say you only have 15 scholarships to give, you got to pick which positions are going to get those 15 scholarships. Uh, these first couple years, we've had enough scholarships in, in the bank to kind of prioritize the needs of every position. We, right. We've almost, like we said earlier, recruited a whole position. So that's kind of a year by year thing. You got to kind of evaluate that as a CEO and decide, hey, are we, are we going to kind of recruit all positions or this year we're not going to take an inside backer? Because even though we'd like to, we got enough in the fold and we got to, we got to use our limited resources. Some place else. Mm -hmm. Very good. And again, if you have a question for Coach Martin, make sure you uh, tweet those to at Miami Red Hawks. We'd be happy to we pass don't, along your we question. We don't have a prize for the question winners, but he might have won that. That was a real good that question. That was a real good question. So, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. we don't have a prize for you. So. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we... Uh, I, you know, again, so tweet your questions to us, and, and who knows, we might find something for you as well. Let's talk about uh, our final group of signees here uh, on the show uh, today, and that is the offensive skill positions. And, uh, uh, again, looking for the best athletes. you got you got pretty much a, a wide range uh, of, of positions here. And we'll start down in Duncan, South Carolina, Burns High School, 5'11", 207-pound running back, Isaiah Hill. Yeah, Burns High School. Anybody that follows high school football knows Burns, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, they played in their first game of the year in Los Angeles, California on national TV. So, apparently one of the best programs in the country, not only South Carolina. Great balance, great strength, really, really versatile. Love Ike. Uh, can run. He's a big, powerful runner with great balance, but he's got very unique ball skills out of the backfield. He's he's probably caught more pass in high school than any back I can ever remember. Can run inside, can run outside. <laughs> has played in nothing but big games. Every game's a big game at Burns High School and played in nothing but in a, in a very, very pressure situation because, again, Burns is that type of program that if you don't win everything, uh, you've had a bad year. So tremendously talented, tremendously versatile. Uh, I can see him lining up in our backfield. I can see him lining up in a receiver type position all throughout his career and creating great versatility. The, the type of back that when he's in your game, you could be an empty mm -hmm. and be very comfortable throwing the ball, but you also could be run the ball, which really creates some issues for different defenses. One of 19 uh, signees today that is a team captain on his team was also named the MVP of the Great American Rivalry, a two-time team MVP, and was selected to play in the North versus South Bowl game is a two-time all-region honoree. Talking about Isaiah Hill from Duncan, South Carolina. Uh, and our next recruit, we move on uh, to Illinois, LaGrange Park, Illinois, Lions Township High School, a 5'11", 195-pound running back, Leonard Ross. Yeah, Leonard is a north and south physical uh, power back, but also has enough ability and speed to run on the perimeter and make some people miss. But he is he's what we love with our power in our inside zone game. He's just a north and south guy. Uh, had an incredible senior year. Uh, they they almost upset as a 16th seed, the number one seed in their in their tournament. On the backs of him, they gave him the ball almost every down the whole game. So, uh, type of kid he is. They were going to elect a new principal to the school, and he was on the committee to elect a new principal. He's the mm -hmm. only student in the school that they wanted in there to decide who the new principal would be. So, pretty pretty special young man. It gives you an idea what the people in that high school think about him as a leader. Uh, huge high energy guy. Him and Treywick are, are two of the guys in this class that definitely every single day they're going to win that day and they're going to they're going to beat the daylights out of that day is what they're going to do. So uh, very physical here. You see him now blocking and <laughs> knocking a guy almost unconscious. So very very physical guy. <laughs> great student. Great person. He will be a leader not only on our football team but he'll be a leader on this campus before he graduates. Yeah, another one of those team captains, as a matter of fact, and uh, earned first team All State as a senior and named the conference's co-offensive most valuable player as well. Three running backs in this class, the third one coming from right here in Oxford, Ohio, and uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what kind of senior season that the six foot, 170 pound running back from Talawanda High School had, Maurice Thomas. Yeah, you get player of the year in the state that says there's yeah. no other honor. You don't have to say anything, but 4,749 yards and 65 touchdowns, those are, those are PlayStation numbers. Exactly. You know, those aren't real numbers. And then 
you know, him and JD getting coach of the year in the state and player of the year in the state right in our own backyard. Pretty special year for Talawana football. The nice thing about these three backs, you got Ike Hill, who's a multi-dimensional kid, inside, outside, passive. You got Ross, who's your power guy, and now we got our speed guy. Mm -hmm. So you got really the triple threat of running backs. You don't want to take three and get the same. You want to take great versatility. Maurice, very, very, he could play in the secondary. He could play corner, but he is fast, returner, fast, fast, fast. And I know as he played some of the better teams on the schedule, I heard some of his opponents say, well, you know, he's fast in that league, but they haven't seen speed like this. And then he'd go <laughs> run away from those guys, too. Yeah. So uh, he's got some big things to do in track this spring. I know he has some lofty goals with the state, uh, get, making it to state and, and doing a great job there. But he's a guy that if you get out in the open, uh, kind of like the Dree Archer type kid in this league, that he can he can turn a short gain into a home run, which basically that's all he did all year long. So blazing speed, great kid. Again, great family. McKenzie's twin brother uh, mm -hmm. comes from a Miami family. And. I said, grow up watching Travis Prentice. Maybe you can break some of his records. Break some be, of his records. Pretty, pretty cool thing to break the guy you grew up watching's records. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about three running backs there, and, and that is the area, one of the areas I know that you were looking to concentrate on in improving the running game. It looks like you got three guys who can help you yeah, out there. Yeah, and, and versatile guys because uh, they can do multi-jobs. Leonard's a running back. That's what he is. Mm -hmm. Ike can be running back receiver. Maurice can be running back DB. we got a lot of flexibility with these kids and, and tremendously talented, great kids. So we, we got a nice little stable going there. Yeah. Yeah. Also signed three wide receivers to uh, this year's class as uh, they signed their letters of intent today from Grayson High School in Loganville, Georgia. 6'2", 180-pound wide receiver Cedric Assay. Tell us about Cedric. Well, Cedric's unique. He's actually a citizen of the Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. he, so that's, wow. that's interesting, right? He came, came to America when he was 11 or 12. Uh, ridiculous track athlete. Was fourth in the state of Georgia in 100 meters last year and had tight hamstrings was didn't know if he's going to run or not and his hamstrings are tight so he got fourth has only played four years of football never why grew up watching football he is as raw as they come he did set a school record receiver grayson's one of the top high schools in the country um kim dietschy the number one player in the country two years ago came at grayson uh, they're always one of the best teams in the state of georgia they'll typically have anywhere from five to 15 division one players on a given year right so he plays the top end competition in the country and he's raw as all get as he told me you got to teach me how to run some of them routes is what he told me so oh, we've yeah. got a raw uh guy uh I know uh, Coach Coach Phillips in the track program have already inquired <laughs> about his his status as far as hey when you get done with spring ball can we run some he's going to run the hundred the two hundred the four by one the four by four and the long jump he high jumped six six as a freshman and then quit high jumping and he went ten six electric in the state meet last year so this he's a six foot one six foot two kid that can run as fast as anybody in the country. We just have to develop him as a football player, and if we do, I think we'll have somebody pretty darn special. Yeah, as a raw player, he set a school record at Grayson. Catches for 47 yards, 678, and had nine touchdowns as a senior. That is Cedric Assay from Loganville, Georgia. Uh, another wideout uh, signing their letter of intent from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Fort Lauderdale High School, 6'397 pound wideout James Gardner. Yeah, great, great. Played mostly quarterback this year. He's yeah. a six foot four quarterback, but long, athletic, absolutely crazy ball skills. And great basketball player. He's averaging 30 plus points a game as senior in basketball, mm -hmm. averaging well into double digits. Um, incredible hands, incredible body control, incredible feet. Needs to get stronger and will get stronger as he, when he gets stronger, he's going to become more explosive. But he is definitely the type of receiver that causes crazy matchup problems. I can definitely see him growing into an inside kid. He's going to be big. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to be. He's going to put on a ton of weight. He's got that frame that he's not going to look like he looks right now. He's long and a little thinner now, but he's going to be a big boy. And obviously, uh, Coach Dunbar understood what he had at throwing all these jump balls. I mean, he's had games of 40 plus points and 18 rebounds, 35 points, 17 rebounds. Uh, played in an All Star game a couple weeks ago in San Jose, California. Flew the red eye home. Went from the airport to school. Went to school all day. Went to his basketball game and had 33 and 18 that night after playing in an all-star football game on wow. Sunday. So tremendous, tremendous athlete, which a huge upside in size that if, if we can continue to develop and physically will be a tough matchup for a corner, never be as big, but it'll be too athletic for those linebackers, just like the Patriots. They flex out Gronk. And, right. Well, they try to put the linebacker on and Gronk, Gronk runs right, right by the linebacker. Then you try to put a corner on and 
Gronk's right too big, and he's the kid like Chris Hudson was a year ago that can create some serious matchup issues for an old DB coach like mm -hmm. me. MVP is senior year and offensive MVP as a junior, and as coach said, a four-year letter winner on the basketball team as well. Probably one of the longest trips you had to make out to Sugar Land, Texas, and Clements High School uh, for 6'5", 192 wide receiver Luke Mayock. Yeah, Luke is uh, long. He's Potential is limitless. His, his difference in his junior and senior tape is incredible. He's another guy with great ball skills and great height, and you're going to see him track the ball and go make tons of plays, which, which we love these guys. Willing blocker. They even put him in the backfield some this year and played him like as a fullback lead blocker, so he's very willing to put his face in and get after people. Uh, nephew of Mike Mayak, who many people know the mm -hmm. that is the Notre Dame games. He's probably the, the foremost authority on the NFL draft and what prospects look like. Here you see Luke throwing people down. I was disappointed on my visit, though. It was 38 in the morning. I flew into <laughs> Houston. I'm like, it's going to be warm. It's going to be nice. And now it's cold in Houston the one day I was there. But uh, incredible kid from an incredible family. A great school, tremendous student. I don't know if he's a four point. We got some of my guys mm -hmm. are in that three, eight, three, nine, four points. Right. I just count them all as four mm -hmm. points. And uh, again, not really recruited, had an okay junior year, but we kept tracking him and Coach Breakin kept tracking. We kept watching his senior tape. We didn't offer him until halfway through his senior year. And a uh, great job by Coach Break of just staying with these guys that we thought had upsides and we didn't close the door on them like a lot of people close the door on those juniors. And right. we kept tracking them and, and, and we really liked what we saw of his senior film and he's got a chance to be a really good one. First team all greater Houston wide receiver and also a scholar athlete of the year. Uh, all Greater Houston as well. Luke Mayock from Sugarland, Texas. And uh, one tight end in the class this year from Brighton, Michigan, and Brighton High School, 6'5", 230 tight end Alex Zielinski. Yeah, we really pride ourselves that we can recruit tight ends because we really use tight ends yeah, in our say, offense. Yeah. And uh, we had, at one point, we had two committed, and one's now committed to Iowa and one's committed to Michigan State. So we apparently did do a good job of recruiting tight ends. And then, unfortunately, the one kid we lost in Michigan State was late in the recruiting deal. And, uh, again, Coach Wells did an incredible job. He, he kept recruiting this kid and uh, said, hey, we don't have one for you because we're done at tight end, but if we have one, would you be interested? And um, he, ends, he ends up not even visiting our campus. He's been here before, but mm -hmm. – during the football recruiting, he never visited. Like, we went home visit him a week ago Sunday after our last recruiting weekend. Me and Pat drove up there to visit him and try to say, hey, we've got one now. We just lost one, and uh, we, we, would, we would love for you to be that next guy for us. And he is, he is another late bloom. You watch his junior tape, it's good. You watch his senior tape, you're like, wow. You know? yeah. and, and he was a kid we wanted to add. We want to add. We were just kind of waiting for a scholarship to free up, and the numbers worked our way, and we're super, super excited. Uh, a lot of history with this high school and us. We had a lot of Brighton kids, and, you know, Colin Fernie played at Brighton, who's one of my all-time closest players. I coached for four years at, at Grand Valley. So tough program, tough kid. And I think most tight ends are either blockers or receivers, and I think he has a unique ability. He's going to be a tremendous inline blocker, but you're going to be able to flex him out. And really, I'm looking for one or the other. And if I'll take an inline blocker that can block power and block zone, and then we may play another guy when we want to flex him out yeah. of run on the field. And I really believe Alex is going to be the kid that really will cause you fits on defense because we could be in our power running game, but we could also be in our four wide offense with him on the field. Right. Very good. And that is Alex Zelensky again from Brighton, Michigan. And the final recruit we'll talk about in this segment from Woodstock, Illinois, Marion Central Catholic High School. Good program out there. 6'4", 214-pound quarterback, Billy Ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm, smiling. I'm smiling, smiling for a lot of reasons on this recruiting day. We, we love all our kids and all our families, but um, Billy's got a ridiculous upside. He, I recruited quarterbacks for a couple years at, at Notre Dame, and um, he, he, to me, is as good as – I mean, he's a top 10, top 15 quarterback in the whole country. Mm -hmm. I, I spent two years looking at all of them. And I was tell, told our coaches, I didn't tell anyone else, because everyone was like, hey, you got a quarterback committed. What do you think? I'm like, ah, oh, he's okay, because I felt like since he committed last spring, he was a kid that could play at any level of football. Mm -hmm. He's six foot four. He's 200-plus pounds. He's going to be 235, 40 pounds at the drop of a hat. He's athletic. He's got great feet in his drop, unbelievably quick feet. He can run the zone read. He can run the power read, although he's considered a drop back pocket style you'll see him run right here mm -hmm. he's more than capable of running like and he's known that he's just this big drop back guy because of his right, size right we've seen him throw a bunch live he can make every throw effortless the sky's the limit for this kid I, I truly believe he would have been a guy would have recruited at my last school 
-hmm. without without a shadow of a doubt. I would recruit him at my last school. So uh, we got him. We got him committed early. Coach Kaler did an incredible job getting this kid and this family committed and convincing them that I was worth coming to play for. <laughs> and then uh, we did a good job of not letting any of his tape get out. And he 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 comes from a family that a commitment's a commitment. So right. they weren't trying to look for more. But he he's really a kid that. Has, has an incredible upside. He's going to have to put in the work, and playing college football is a lot different than playing high school, but he's from a program that have sent quarterback after quarterback to major college, and his quarterback coach played at Wisconsin. His quarterback coach has been there, or his offense corner has been there a long time, and he looked at us when we were at a late season practice, and he looked at me and Eric, and he's like, you know you're getting a steal, right? And we kind of <laughs> we <kinda> like, <laughs> we know. We're not, we're not, because he knew we were holding our, Oh, our yeah. cards pretty oh, yeah. close to our chest and he's like but he's had guys he's got a guy in minnesota he's got a guy at pit right now and he's yeah. like you know he's better than all these oh uh, yeah like. so oh, yeah. it's been it, it was pretty pretty awesome recruiting by by coach kale and our offensive staff and we're, we're excited to get billy here and we we think we got a couple young quarterbacks in our program uh, they have a great, great upside, and he's one of them. Yeah, and outstanding yet, and uh, that'll that'll do it as far as the recruits for the offensive skill position, and uh, just a great class put together by Coach Martin and his staff, and uh, we will come back and continue with more of our National Signing Day special here from the offices of Head Coach Chuck Martin after this on the Miami IMG Sports Network. Back on our National Letter of Intent National Signing Day special here at Miami University and on Miami All Access. Steve Baker here, the voice of the Red Hawks. And uh, as we uh, did earlier, we want to introduce to you to another one of the Miami assistant coaches. And Bill Breakin joins us here. And uh, Bill, it, you have played for Coach Martin. Yes, you were sir. recruited by Coach Martin. So you've seen both sides of the recruiting process involved with Coach. And uh, uh, obviously with this, uh, this class, it's, it's pretty incredible. Tell us about that process and obviously your association with Coach Martin. Well, I've known Coach Martin for almost 10 years now. Uh, I've got a really close relationship with him uh, throughout the recruiting process and now as an assistant coach and playing career with him. Um, obviously, when I was recruited out of high school, did not choose Grand Valley, got caught up a little bit in the level of play and, and, and those things and didn't really go with my heart and really, where I really should have ended up. Um, he had to re-recruit me after I transferred from Northern Iowa back to Grand Valley State. So uh, got re-recruited in the process and, and found out all the things that I already knew that he was a great guy and a, a great guy to work for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working with Coach and, and putting together the recruiting class and working every day, uh, obviously you have known him for a very long time. We talked to uh, Coach Kaler. He's known him for a long time. It's really a sense of family within, you know, not only the coaching staff, but within the football program itself. There's no question. It, that, that's the way he wants to run his program. That's the people he looks to hire is guys that understand the value of those things, whether you have kids or you just have a wife or you have a girlfriend that you've been with for a long time. And, he understands that with the players too, and he wants them to trust him. He wants them to believe in, in the things that he's doing. That, you know, he's he's gonna hold you to a different standard, you know. And and even as a coach now, he holds me to the same standard he held me as a as a player. That he wants to get the best out of you, and and everybody sees that. And 
you know, at the end of the day, it's all in our best interest and, and my interest and my player's interest and his own interest. It's everybody fighting for the same things. Sometimes that's a little tough lesson to learn, though, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you know, I mean, and talking about the players and, and learning that lesson, yeah, I've got your back, but you're going to learn some things along I've the way. I've told my players that every day since I got here, that, that we're going to coach you differently. Every coach on this staff is going to have their own ways of coaching, but at the end of the day, we all have your best interest in mind. And uh, he's going to challenge you. It ain't always going to be fun to play for Coach Martin as a player. There were days I came off the field and I felt as down as you could mm -hmm. because he he demanded more than you what you were given, you know, mm -hmm. and you thought you were given your all, but he saw a different level of expectation that you could give. And he, he proved to you that you can expect more of yourself than what he expects of you. So as soon as you get to realize that, that, that what he's trying to do is driving you to become a better player, a better person, a better student, the, the more the quick, more quickly it will become to, to realize that that's what he's doing. For yeah, him. absolutely. And, and putting together this class, obviously, a lot of work put in by the assistants, uh, the grad assistants, everybody really working together to put this together. Yeah, there's no question. And we've done a nice job working together as a staff, the area recruiter, then the position coach. And then you really bring the nail in the coffin with the head coach in when he starts talking to your guys too. And they start to realize what type of person he is. You know, yeah. we all know, you look at his track record, what type of coach he is, his success that he's had at every level from Division Three to Division Two, Grand Valley, winning national championships, not at Notre Dame to now Miami. We all know what track record he has from a football standpoint, but we believe in what he is as a person. Mm -hmm. and, and as you get recruited as a high school kid, you start to realize like, He's really in this for me. He, mm -hmm. he cares a lot about winning. Don't get me wrong, this, is, this profession's about winning games, winning championships, but at the end of the day, it's also about getting your degree, becoming a better person, and, and the more you realize that, the better we'll, off we'll all be. Getting that success even after uh, playing college level football. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time uh, coming in. Congratulations on a great class. Yeah, con thanks a lot. And uh, again, a lot of work by a lot of people on our staff. And, you know, we're, we're excited about what's going to happen next year. Very good. Bill Breakin joining us here, and we will continue with more of our National Signing Day special in just a moment here on Miami All Access.
Welcome back to our National Signing Day special here at Miami University. We're inside the offices of head coach Chuck Martin at Yeager Stadium and uh, have introduced you to the signees uh, to sign their national letter of intent today to attend Miami University. And I'm rejoined by the head coach of the Red Hawks, Chuck Martin. And uh, coach, uh, uh, an outstanding class overall. I, and you take a look at the athleticism, the size, I think, is the most impressive thing to me uh, across the board. And we talk about that. That was one of the big things that you were looking to get across, but the size and just watching the film, the athleticism, athleticism of the signees is, is great. Yeah, no, we got length at every position. Mm -hmm. uh, we got more than length with the offensive line. We got length and bulk. Some of these kids are already 290 pounds and are still young kids. Um, we've added the speed element, a couple blazers in Maurice Thomas and Cedric Assay, but then we've added the length at those positions too with the Mayox and the Gardeners, these, these big taller kids. And you know, the, the DBs, the, the, the Koi Koi can really run and, and Josh Allen can really run, but we also like the versatility of our skill guys that we got mm -hmm. multi-position guys that, you know, if we have a need at a certain, at, you know, running back could play wide out or a wide out could play DB. So we have some versatility there. So, and then we recruit in almost every position, you know, we like to have one more safety in this class, but mm -hmm. we, other than that, we could go out and play, play 22 guys and put nice. together a team and probably be halfway decent right out of the shoot. So we're, we're very excited. And then the, the, the academic piece is we're off the charts. You know, there's, there's a few kids that aren't maybe mm -hmm. as high as the other ones, but there's a lot of 3.5 to 4.0 students in this class. And, and then the quality of competitiveness of these kids, they already have a swagger to them. They're, they're coming here to bring Miami football back. I mean, there's no doubt in their minds that's what they're coming here to do. You know, mm -hmm. they're on a mission from, from right now. I'm talking to them this morning, and they're all telling me, Coach, I, I can't wait to get to We got it. Like, we got to get work, and we got to get Miami back to where Miami balls. They bought into the academic piece here. They bought into the tradition of Miami and that it's our responsibility to uphold this tradition and restore the tradition of Miami. So uh, the fact that they have a little swagger to them already, yeah. uh, somebody took a shot at somebody's commitment last night and the kid that committed fired back. And then a couple of other recruits <laughs> fired back like, you know, they got no idea what's going to happen in Miami. So just let them sit back and watch. So, uh, you know, confidence is important, you know, in all walks sure. of life, but to Vic, particularly Division One football players, you got to have a belief that you're going to go out there and win these games. Yeah. Uh, great class. Uh, I do want to ask you about, obviously, a freshman class a year ago. Those guys have gotten bigger and ready and are, are going to play a role this, uh, this spring and this fall. Yeah, from, no. From yeah, we've got, we've got a number of guys, and we've got – we had a, a, a good nucleus of seniors that were our main guys, as yeah. we know. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a lot of opportunities for kids to step up and fill in, and, and we got a number of freshmen – at a variety of positions, you know, offensive skill guys. They, you know, we talked about Sam Martin, who already played, but you got Kenny Young, who's who's a blazer, yeah. uh, who we had a competition that what I thought was probably our three fastest guys in the team, and Kenny was one of the three close. yesterday, and <laughs> no one was. It was amazing because everyone was hooping and hollering. It was offense yeah. versus defense, and when the defense won, they were cheering. When the offense won, they were cheering, and that race got done, and everyone was just stunned, quiet, like. <laughs> That was a short race to win by that yeah. much. Uh, and then Kenny told me, he's like, God, because you know, he's from Tallahassee, Florida. He's like, so cold I could because we were outside on oh, Yeager yeah. Stadium. He's like, God, I mean, my hamstrings were so tight, Coach. I'm like, well, <laughs> don't tell the other guys. That don't tell them, yeah. <laughs> it appeared that they were fine to me. He's like, God, I can barely run, Coach. I'm like, so uh, we're excited about those guys. We got a slew of young offense line, the Zach Coveys, the Jordan Riggs, the Mitch Palmers, uh, Zach Swartz, and I. We got more that I can't even name right. or think of right now. Then defense, obviously, Tony Reed was a – key last year late in the year central mm -hmm. michigan got his feet wet in miami or excuse me OU, ou game yep. uh we we win that game a lot of people are talking about the efforts of tony reed on defense that night as a second game starter mm -hmm. all right and then akeem allen did some nice things as an inside kid as a freshman which right. was a tough but we got dan sinis and mac duffin uh and, and we got sam conley and, and koenig and bradley ernst and a lot of guys that are chomping at the mitt to go and we're excited we don't really know what we got yet right. but this spring they're going to get out most of those guys were on scout team a year ago, so mm -hmm. we're going to get them out there this spring and really try to feel, figure out what we may or may not have. Well, that was going to be my next question is uh, spring ball is the next step. That's uh, what's coming up, obviously, the indoor facility opening up and, and being able to get in there and work out. We talked about that when we gave uh, folks the sneak peek, but spring ball is just around the corner. Obviously, the numbers kind of limit what you do in spring ball. Yeah, a little bit, but we're better. Better, particularly yeah. offensive line. We we were so lean last year. We didn't have a two deep at old line where we can piece together a two and a half deep at old line, and that a lot of time dictates um, 
how how much you can do. So we'll definitely be able to do more than we did last year. You're always worried with the numbers in the spring because you lose the seniors. The freshmen aren't here yet. Uh, but we're in a much better situation. And we're just in a much better situation in strength training. Like when I got here, we were a mass unit. Mm -hmm. And you guys all told me oh, that. Yeah. You yeah, knew yellow jerseys right. everywhere, yeah. You know, you guys knew it, which I didn't even know that piece I was walking into. Mm -hmm. And and now, right now, we have a couple guys that had surgeries at the end of last year that are, aren't going to be back. But we're, we're a really there healthy team. And that's credit to Paul. Uh, Doc Daly and, and the medical staff and our training staff have absolutely worked their tails off for these kids and challenge these kids, and then Coach Harker and his staff. So the combination of the training, athletic training, getting them rehabbed and getting them back, and then the strength, we're just a way healthier team because we're bigger and stronger. And this is a sport that if you're not big and strong, you can't win the battles and you can't run the ball and you can't stop the run. But the biggest issue is you're going to be hurt all the time yeah. because it's a physical sport. And we walked into a very small team that was underdeveloped, and therefore, like you guys saw that we're here before I got here, we were always hurt. Well, there's no, you know, it was, it, was it the strength training's fault? Was it the trainer's fault? And I'm like looking at these guys like it has nothing to do. This is this is more so a recruiting, recruiting. issue. We, it's not. If you're the Volkswagen, you run the truck. The Volkswagen gonna hurt. The Volkswagen <laughs> gets hurt. And we were we were at that stage as a program that mm -hmm. we got kids that aren't strong enough. They're going to get hurt. So as we continue to get bigger and stronger, which our current kids are doing a great job, we're going to continue to hopefully stay healthier and, and have our, our really good players on the field. One of the big things that will happen uh, hopefully between now and the beginning of the football season is groundbreaking for another new facility, the uh, Athletic Performance Center, which will be between uh, Jaeger Stadium and the new uh, indoor uh, sports center. And uh, this is a facility that is just going to help so much this football program. Yeah, you think I was smiling a minute ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the indoor is awesome. The indoor is not. Oh, you wait to incredible. see this next building that they've got planned. Like, everybody's like, oh, the indoor. I'm like, that's the little one. Yeah. This and, and the indoor is very important for recruiting, very important for the development of players, but this next building is going to have it all, and it's going to be one-stop shopping. And demographically, our kids' lives are just going to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, brand-new state-of-the-art locker room, brand-new state-of-the-art weight room, brand-new state-of-the-art meeting rooms, state-of-the-art coaching offices, training facility, rehab facility. It's all tied into Jaeger Stadium. Mm -hmm. So you walk to the right from the locker room, and you're going through the tunnel to Jaeger Stadium. You turn left, and you're in our indoor facility. You go straight across the hall, and you're in the weight room. Yeah. So efficiency, efficiency is huge in, in how we run our program and making these kids' lives efficient and helping them save time on travel and make their life easier so they can be more productive. Well, and we talk all the time about the biggest hurdle for a new athlete to come into a college level, Division One college level, and do and handle is time management. Yeah. And if you're taking, yeah, basically with this building, you're going to save 45 minutes to an hour of that student's life just walking back and forth. Yeah, travel time is going to be, the commute is going to be a lot different. Mm -hmm. More time to study, more time to train, more time to relax and sleep, but also easier for them to volunteer their football time. Right. You know, I would say we got eight hours off season, 20 hours in season, and great players give you more than that. Just the way it is. I've been mm -hmm. at Division Two, II, Division Three, Division One. Great players, when they're not required to, are in there watching tape. Well, it's hard now to do that the way we're set up. But mm -hmm. if the locker room's here and upstairs is the film room, all of a sudden it's they get done with their workouts, they take a shower, they got an extra 15, 20 minutes, they can go watch tape. Well, right now they're traveling to go watch tape if right. they're in the weight room to get. So just creating an environment that they can really do all the things they want to do in their day and have opportunities right at their fingertips to to do a little bit extra. Right. Well, what is next for the football program? Obviously, this is a huge day, obviously, for this football program. Finally get it chance to breathe before no you doubt. get into spring ball no no today's a huge day like i say it's like finals anybody taking finals yeah finals it's the anxiety before and taking them and it's it's kind of a nice exhale when you get it's out of your finals yeah. and that's kind of what signing day is and uh we're so excited about this class and we're so excited about being at miami the the thing i want to tell all our fans and all like we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. like i just told the guys like this truly should be our worst recruiting class, and I'm not trying to knock the recruiting class we just had, but realistically, we didn't even start looking at juniors last year until after the signing day. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we got here in January. We're trying to scramble and find 14 Probably seniors 14, yes. in, in three weeks that want to play football and might even be a student. We didn't even think about a junior. Mm -hmm. And there was kids already committed. By the time we started looking at juniors, there's some of our top competitors in this league already had kids committed that we would have loved to have taken a shot at, right. but it was already done because of, you know, we got Just in late time. and, you know, we had a junior day last Saturday. We had 75 kids on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, 20 of them had BCS offers. You know, 72 had Division One offers. Mm -hmm. Well, 
we're already on way ahead on the next yeah, class. Yeah. You know, we're year two, so we, we should continue to grow and build. So then what I always want to, you know, we know where we're going. We know we can get there. We got to let the, we're excited about these young kids, but we got to let these young kids grow up, yeah. you know, and, and we got this great offensive line group. I believe they're going to be great offensive linemen here, but they're not going to be great as freshmen. But we, we may play a bunch of younger guys and give them an opportunity and just let them grow and develop in our program. And when we get two, three, four classes put back to back, we will be back to being a championship caliber football team. And I always told the freshmen that recruiting, like, I'm going to keep all the all the Pavarazzi off your back yes. because I know what a freshman football player looks like. Right. You know, and even though you're a great freshman, you're still just a freshman. So just keep preaching patience and doing it the right way. Let's not cut corners and go for a quick fix at Miami. There's no reason Miami has to take that path. Right. It's too good a school and too good a location with too beautiful a campus with so much support and great football tradition. We can take our time and get this. That's why they won for 60 straight years because mm -hmm. they just kept getting good freshmen to come here that want to be student athletes and had, had really high dreams. And we're just going to start stacking and we can stack these classes back to back. Everybody's like, well, when are you going to get back? I'm like, I I'm not even worried. I know we're getting there. I'd like it to be next year. And I'm not saying it won't be next year. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we're going to be patient and do it the right way because there's Miami deserves. And then when we get it there, it's going to stay there for a long, long time like it did hopefully another six decades. Uh, I, I, certainly that's the goal, and I think this class gets us a long way there. Coach, thank you so much. As always, uh, this has been a lot of fun for me to, to sit here and talk about what is coming up positively for the I program. I got one more shout-out. Yes, sir. I always like to try to interrupt you. Oh, that's all right. right. No, right no that's all right. Mojo, so yes, yes, just I have, to, I have to thank my staff. Oh, yeah. And I have to thank their families because at the end of the day, recruiting is – a ton of hard work mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of hours and I said you can out recruit people not because necessarily you're the slick fast talker but you can out recruit people because you spend more time a lot of these kids have chosen us mm -hmm. we had 75 kids last junior day because of the belief in these coaches already because the amount of time they spend with these kids and the relationships they build with these kids and the mm -hmm. trust of who they are not just the X's and O's or we've helped kids get the NFL that's all very important or we've won in the past that's very important but the relationships these kids have chose Miami because they believe in these assistant coaches and they want to play for those guys mm -hmm. and in the time that they've spent there's a lot of BCS junior days and we had more BCS scholarship guys at our junior day than any of our competitors here in the Midwest it was mm -hmm. a pretty pretty awesome day and that's all because our guys have busted in December January been in these high schools twice and seen seen these kids work out and seen these kids play basketball and done all the things you know and then along with it comes their wives and their kids because mm -hmm. When my guys were out there busting it, we were on a 17-day grind here where our guys didn't even come home on the weekends. Right. Like, we, we started the, you know, January 14th to be out on the 15th, and our whole staff just worked right through that weekend. And then we got home the next weekend, but we had a recruiting weekend. We were back on Sunday, and we had another recruiting weekend. So we've gone about two and a half weeks. These guys haven't even seen their families. And the support that we get from our wives and our kids and the understand that, hey, it takes players like – Mm -hmm. My wife always says, like, I get you, you're a good coach, but I know you're good because you've had a lot of good players. Like, my right. wife gets a drill. So when it comes to recruiting, she's like, go get some. <laughs> go get some. You know, she, was the one, <laughs> she was the one texting me this morning. I'm watching this show. Where's Junior's NLI? You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like, it's coming. Don't worry. She's like, I'm just making sure, you know. So Absolutely. I got my boss here with David Saylor and President Hodge, but then you got, I'm getting texts like, where's There's Junior's NLI? Home. What's going on? You know, I thought you knew that high school coach. What's going on? You know, so that's, but the, the support that our guys, have gotten from home because you're single moms for December and January and right. spring recruiting and the whole deal. So I just want to have the time to thank them and everything they've done because they're the ones that are getting this thing back where we need to get it to. Well, outstanding class and uh, congratulations on, on that. And uh, we'll look forward to spring ball and uh, then right into the fall. Thank you yeah, so much. The spring date, just so people yep. know, because we, yep. you know, we're very open. You're out at practice right. all the time. And, um, Basically, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday in April, we'll practice. You oh, know, okay. 3 o'clock on Tuesday, Thursday, 10 o'clock on Saturday. Those are set. Um, the first week, we're going to go Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. That's in March when the weather's not even very good mm -hmm. before spring break. So we're going to go a week. Then we're going to take spring break. But the easiest one for people listening that want to come watch. I don't care if you're a high school coach or a junior that wants to come check out practice or just one of Miami's many football fans it's, wants to come. Yep. We've got a very much an open door policy and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, every week in April, we're going to be out there trying to help Miami football get better. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peg. Head coach Chuck Martin. And again, that'll do it for our national signing day special. Have to thank uh, our director and uh, TD over there, uh, Chris Dawson, outstanding job putting together the videos that you saw here today, along with Kyle Cron, the director of uh, video operations for Miami football. Assisting uh, back there is uh, Doug Blaze and Matt Bridgeford. 
And special thanks also to uh, Christopher Smith, our director of new media, and also uh, to Dave Meyer, our uh, director, uh, assistant athletic director in charge of athletic communications. Just excellent work all day long from 6.30 this morning all the way through now in uh, getting all of the word out about all of our signees and uh, putting together our special here today. It's been a lot of fun. We invite you to stay tuned. If you're watching on Miami All Access, coming up at 2 o'clock, head coach Chuck Martin will have a press conference and uh, we'll talk with members of the media about this uh, day as well and the signees. Again, for everybody in the room here in Coach Martin's office, thanks for watching our National Signing Day special here on Miami All Access.